Hi everybody, it's, it's me again. <laughs> I think you've been up with me. But anyway, uh, we're all here tonight. It's going to be a great show simply because we're going to talk football. And most importantly, we're going to talk about the Reds. You deserve to be talked about. Or any of the club's wages or whatever. They're interested in them. Interested in the Reds. The Reds. What we're all interested in. I'll just like to sit before I bring my guests on. I'm just going here to this lad here, Mary Stan. Greetings from the new kid on the stream. Hiya, Mary. Welcome to this wonderful uh, stream because you'll enjoy it. You'll have got a comment. We discuss it. You just put it up and we discuss. Paul Turner. Evening, Frank. Panel and the chat. And I made up you saying that because I was going to come up with that. And Larry Lloyd, you know, I've I, I seen Larry play, uh, to be honest. And, and we sold him to, uh, we actually sold him to Nottingham Forest. But, you know, we had uh, Hanson and we had Lawrence, if you know what I mean. So, you know, Larry. But he went on to win two European Cups as well. Don't forget. And as uh, Ian says, uh, yep, sad news. That is sad news. TW, even if Frank and Gat were a gang now, lads, we're a gang. We're all a gang. We're the ultras. <laughs> Are we the ultras? Is our stream the ultras? <laughs> you could you imagine the, the ultras talking Liverpool, absolutely. And uh, Paul Turner was one of Shankly's. Yes, he was. He said, and uh, scored the crucial goal to win the UEFA Cup in 73, Larry Lloyd. Yes. And uh, how was your day then after this morning's stream? <laughs> Keep it well set. Made it. <laughs> Made it. I can't get this right, you know. My stupid head. Anyway. And then there's Ravenite. That great name that isn't it? Ravenite Strength. It's Strength and he's a red. So there you go. There you go. Right, I'm gonna bring on the lads now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring on our lads. Lee Carlson. Hiya Lee. Greetings. I'm going to bring on Darrell, LFC Gaffey. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Darrell. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Hey, mate. And hey, the mate. one and only, JK. Where is he? Did no, I take him off? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I took him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Kermit. Yeah. You got the you, you got the red card there, unbeknown. Um, oh, who's Kermit, Daryl? Oh, there's our lovely Jean. <laughs> Jean, I, I want to show you t-shirts and I can't because Jason isn't here. I'll try and get hold of him in about an hour. You want to see the t-shirts the Jean has uh, designed. Fabulous, and I'm talking fabulous. They really are absolutely brilliant. And if you're going away this year, you know the ideal to wear. Absolutely brilliant, honestly. So anyway, yeah. Good evening, lovely Frank and chat. See, see that too? lovely Frank. Hi, Jean. She just mentions mentions you. Just you know, by the way, you know. Put you up there, put the lads there, and uh, big up the panel. Says, keep it real, Ian McHale, Evelyn Lee, Darrell, JK, Frank, Bless. Evelyn, Ian, and uh, AJK, Lee, and Darrell. And look at the little lads there, he is there for me, Frank. Up the, uh, yeah, well, there you go, you see, because <laughs> my name's not mentioned. Well, nothing's out for me. 
been waiting to see these. I'll get them on. I'll get them on. I'll get old to Jason. I'll get old to Jason because he's got. I can't do it. You see, unfortunately, Jason, as you know, is the um, Jason, as you know, is the uh, producer, and he puts all these mad things up. Not mad things. I wanted to put a picture up of Larry Lloyd, and I, I, I can't do it. Because he, he's not working, he, he's I mean he's working, he's he's out late with his job. Uh IG says T W Daz big up Frank mate, thank you, Daz. Oh, he's a lovely fellow. I'd love him to come on here, you know, once um, sometime. I really would. And uh as he says, no problem. No pro no, I wanna get it on, I'll, I'll give him a ring. When I make myself a cup of coffee to keep me awake, you know, from the, this lot of here, the, the panel. What are you saying? We're going to put you to sleep, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, was waiting for, I was waiting for a little, uh, you know, a little comment there. I'll soon wake you up. I'll soon wake you up. A little bit mean. <laughs> well, yeah, look, the boys are back in town, absolutely. Our oh, Fuzzy's yeah. world. Is he on? Is that Fuzzy it's on? Fuzz. How's he, mate? Is he on, JK? Where is he? No, he's not. No, he's not. Oh, why, why isn't he? He never... Normally, he's. he, never, he asked me if he's going to get a link sent back. I can send him a link, no problem. Okay, well, you send him a one on one. Is that okay? Yeah, that's on, no problem. Excellent. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited now. I met Fez, Fuzzy. Oh, he's a lovely fellow, you know. Yeah, Big red, like all these on here. Make all these on here. Where's it that lad gone? That Mari lad. Where is he? He put on. Yeah, look, uh, Mari, Matt. Hang on. Mari says, I'm a Liverpool supporter, recommended to join by mentor Chris the Monty Reds. Ah, oh, well done, Mari. Well done. Absolutely brilliant. Open for a win Sunday and go on to the to a treble. See these Montenegro and they're all reds, you know, in Montenegro. And they're just wonderful supporters. Just like Mari. Mari is a Mari say we in Liverpool and Scotlands we say Mari. And uh, I suppose uh, Chris says that as well to you, Mari. Mary instead of Mary, mind you. Oh, look at that, Paul says, you know, welcome, Mary. Well done, well done, lads. You know, I just make it a big well. Oh, oh there are. look, red birds as well. Welcome to our family, Mary. Isn't that lovely? I love all this, you know. Uh, keep it real. Remember that JC White talks football? He went to the Australia the other night, Frank. I popped in their stream and it's three Leeds, Leeds ladies who were up their barn. It's funny as... <laughs> I like Leeds. I go on... Um, there's, there's only a few um, non-Liverpool ones that go on and one is just Joe, the Leeds fan. Do you know what I mean? He's got a bald head and he's been on Red Men TV. No, he's been on Cop Talk, I think. Uh, no, what one? He's been on um, Talking Cop that used to be... Um, it, or what did it used to be called? Um, it's the Irish lads. Do you know which one I mean? It's called Talking Cop now. Oh, you Talking know? Cop, yeah, for four yeah. Irish fellas. Yeah, what did it used to be Gav, called? Gav, uh, Matt, no, not Gav, Ken. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And that other uh, fella, yeah. Well, they've had just Joe and yeah, the Leeds lad. And I like Leeds. I, I feel a little bit of kindred spirit, shit, but kindred spirit with Leeds because they ain't Man United as much as we do Leeds. I remember being at a match at Anfield mm. and playing Leeds and they were in the Anfield Road end and that's what they were singing. If you're all like Man United, clap your hands. Why not? Why not? Why not? I like Leeds. Leeds have been in the European Cup final years ago. They were narrowly beaten by Bayern Munich. The year before we won it for the first time, I think it was, 76. No, sorry, 75 it was. 
They played St Etienne in 76 in the final um, by Munich, but in 75 they played John Reedy's Leeds. Uh, Bonkers series, what are we talking about tonight? We'll be talking about a lot, a lot really. Listen boys, will you press the likes, just press the likes, get that algorithm out there and uh, you know the subscribe as well please. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm worried, in, lad, in. What I want to talk about a bit tonight is I'm worried lad, about us getting ripped off by a VAR and the refs again and losing the point by a title because even if we win all that, no, hang on, if we say we say we lost out by a point, that would mean we've been ripped off again because of Diaz's goal at Spurs, like we were ripped off in 2022 with Rodri's handball at Goodison Park. I mean, God, it happened a stone's throw away from Anfield at Goodison Park and once again, Man City with the away team but Paul, Paul Tierney said it wasn't a clear and obvious error. Is handball, Rodri's handball. And then the PGMOL come out and give their first ever apology for a wrong decision. And I was like, oh, thanks. We've already lost the title now. And if we'd have won that title because that, it, that pen was given and Richarlison scored it, I think we'd have beat Madrid in Paris as well off the back of it. So there... That's what we're talking about, bonkers, lads. <laughs> even um, even if we lose the league by five points, that's still five points we should have had from the games that were was were, were cruelly like given against us: Arsenal, Tottenham, Man City. That's five points. That's no, you're right. Was... You're absolutely right there, because uh, if we went five by five points, we should have won by ten points, and we can argue about that, can't we? We should have won that at ten points. Anyway, so listen, lads, tonight, are we worrying about the weekend? No. Not really. I see us winning. I'm hoping we win by a few to get that goal difference up as soon as possible. I'm not liking sitting behind Arsenal on goal difference. That's happened once before and we lost the bloody league. Can't be having that again. Do you know what? I don't know how to take this. I'm being serious. Frank, got you on and the darts on my TV. Good lad. Oh, he's got me on. Is he throwing darts at me? <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a dart board up in here, you know, for after the pub. If we met anyone we liked in the pub, me and my brother, we'd be like, do you want to come and play darts? Like, well, after the pub, shut. But um, those days are over now. I don't have people here to play darts no more. I'm too old for that, lad. Well, Mary Stan, uh, she, she's the image of uh, that wonderful uh, girl. What's her name? Sinead O'Connor. Yes. Yeah. I remember seeing Sinead O'Connor on telly and she said exactly what I think myself. She said, the Smiths made me happy about the band, the Smiths. And people are like, what? They're a bit depressing then. It's like, no, that, you did, they're depressing if you're thick as pig shit. I don't understand good words and I'm very intelligent. That's when the Smiths are depressing because you can't understand like concepts like and, and clever words. That's why you don't like the Smiths, you freak. But she said on telly, the Smiths made her happy, and they did, they made me happy as well, and still do all the same. I'll tell you what, Lee, here's a good trivial question for you. Did you know that uh, Prince wrote nothing compares to you, fortunate O'Connor? I did, mate, yeah. What a Prince's throwaways, like Manic Monday for the Bangles. Yeah. Prince wrote so many. Bangles, we're talking about, uh, you know, Sinead O'Connor, the Smiths. And everybody else tonight. We're not talking about Liverpool. So if you've got any songs, you know, that you want to be played by JK, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and the bunker says, uh, yes, Lee, offside, not offside, pens and goals not given. Yes. And sends an offs, don't forget. Sends an offs. And uh, Frank, what's spooky is the fact that I said those decisions could cost us a goal on, on goal difference. You did, she did, you know. She said that to me. 
She said, you know, goal difference could play a massive part. We'll get that back. Yeah. And uh, as Mari says, uh, gonna gonna have to win all the games and beat the refs. Yes. Beat them over the head with a big ball. Bosey's way, our oh, Wales. I'm at work, JK, bro. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, but I told him next time I'll let him know the day before. Yeah, absolutely. Do that. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's what I want to ask you now. As you're all sitting there. The game on Sunday. Do you want a pod post or pre? Post. Post the one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Post. Okay. Yeah. Let me sort out the time and then it'll go to you. Is that okay? After the City game. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. I see Brighton giving us a game because we've also lost the rhythm we were in. Although we lost our last game, which I'm not that bothered about because it was only the FA Cup. Um, although we lost our last game, our rhythm's gone a bit now. Uh, but that's the same for the other teams. It'll be the same for Brighton. Um Mind you saying that Brighton were getting beaten an awful lot <laughs> before the break. They won a couple, but they went out of Europe rather embarrassingly. They got smashed to smithereens by Roma, who were no great shakes. Um, and they so got hammered by anyway. Luton as well, Lee. They got hammered by Luton as well. So There they go, mate. He's a mad beast. Yeah, uh, TW wants a post as well. So we love a post. Is that okay? And we love it. Um, and now we're after the. I'll give you time to digest the Arsenal Man City game. Is that okay? Yeah. Whatever time that finishes, by the mm-hmm. way. So we love it. An hour after that, we'll get the time. Get the Asian to get up the time. And I'm wanting there. either a draw or an Arsenal win. I think it's best for Liverpool. Because City have been through it so many times, the title race. All right, Arsenal were in it last season up until about a month. It was about a month, wasn't it, before the end when uh, we knew they weren't going to win it. It was about four games from the end we knew they wouldn't win it. But um, I'd rather that Arsenal won than um, than Man City. But I think I'd rather have a draw. Or when all said and done, I prefer a draw. That would put us three points ahead of City and two ahead of Arsenal. And hopefully we can rectify that goal difference with Arsenal as well by the time we get to the nitty gritty of the uh, final day. Yeah. 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 True enough. True enough. All right. So, anyway, we've got this. Now, I've been trying to find out, and it's a mystery to me, this. We know about Jones coming back. We know about Trent coming back as well next week. We know about the uh, the Jot coming back. We know about uh, everybody coming back. We even know that bleeding Matip's uh, running. So what? Where's he running to? And um, we've got um, we've, we've got it more or less everyone back. But the thing is, Alison, what's happening to him? He's had a setback, hasn't he? Are you kidding? What? No. You're telling me he's not back for the Brighton game? No, two more weeks on top of that. Set oh, back. Frig off. The season's over in two weeks. Behave. Two weeks. What good's that to us? Stupid get. Bunkers, <laughs> this is what we're talking about today. Anger and frustration. Oh, hey, man. Man's no, it is. It, it, it's ridiculous. I'm not being funny here. But as Alisson had a full season with us, the thing is, when he's missed in the past, he's only ever missed one or two games. And I mean, in a row, he hasn't missed like eight or nine or ten in a bloody row. But this one, oh, no, I'm not having that. Mind you saying that, we're looking good. Um, Kelleher's looking good. And I think I'd rather have Jota back first with his goals. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We score teams. But I, I want Curtis Jones thrown in. I'm sorry there. I want, I'll, I'll go to this. What difference? What difference? Okay, keep getting, you know, Alisson's not playing anyway. 
I'm going to start with JK, then you, Lee, then you, uh, Daryl. So, what two players? Oh, all right, I'll just give you the two players Curtis Jones, yeah, and Curtis Jones and Jota. How important will they, them, those two be in the side? How important are they to the side right now if they're back? Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at the bigger picture, bro, I think we sort of scraped through that phase where we had loads of people out. So mm. I think the worst is over. Um, so we we didn't really, really miss them, if you understand my point. Like Kelleher did a fine job. Connor Buddy did a fine job. So we haven't really missed the injured guys because we only lost to United. So... Having them back on board, of course, is going to make our uh, squad better and uh, more options available. Um, so we don't have to rely on the youth players, you know. Even them guys did well when they came in. So we've sort of we're sort of lucky that we've got through this, not four points off top. You know, we're only off goal difference. You know, it could have gone much worse. And I think uh, we should be a little bit thankful of how it's actually run. But for me, Jones coming back, yeah, another guy for the midfield. Yota, probably one of my favourite forwards who we've got. Um, he can spring up with the goal as well. Thing is, are these guys going to be full, fully, fully fit when they come back? I think uh, it's going to take them a couple of weeks to just get uh, back into the runner thing. So that's the thing with the time scales of who's coming back, when and where. You know, Alisson, they're saying in three weeks now. But Gallagher's done all right, you know, uh, bar the Man United game. Um, but I'd rather have Allison in goal. I've always liked, for me, Allison best goalie in the world. Mate, the know? season's over in three weeks. Three, That's three, weeks. About three months. Three months. It's ten games, Lee. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, but look, well, you are. In three weeks' time, it'll be nearly May. It's nearly April now. In yeah. three weeks' time, it'll be nearly May. May's the end of the season, mate. The end of the season. Yeah. And it is right, you know. And how many games do we play within the those three weeks? Lots. A game. Lots. We've got a game every three games. Every three so days, sorry. Yeah, windows, yeah. It's windows. We'd love we'd love it, Ali there. Every one of us because he's the best keeper in the world. And I'm going to lean now. How pivotal is Jota? And Curtis Jones to the uh, squad now. Yeah, they are pivotal because we really miss the pair of them since they've been out. Um, I mean, Nottingham Forest away was the um, the optimum game for us having no players, wasn't it? That was the yeah. the zenith of our like um, bare bones squad. We had nobody for that game hardly, did we? We could barely put eleven players out. Never mind eleven senior players. We could barely put eleven players out. And that's how bad it's been, our injury luck this season. Okay. Well, as a, 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 rather than <coughs> ask Daryl the same, because I know that he's just going to agree, I'll, I'll go to it, the soul boy, soul boy Fran. I think this is a good comment here. Mm, mm. Tiago Ankel Tag. Ankel Tag. Yeah. <laughs> It's like it's like uh, you want to say to you, I don't thank you. Oh, hey, can't have Whoa, 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 in it, you know. Anyway, uh, he says, uh, taking his coaching badges, so Alonso might keep him on board with Spanish influence. How about that? What would you say to that? Yeah, uh, I, 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 for me, I, I said that. I says, uh, this season. He should be getting his coaching badges because he's going to retire soon anyway. Yeah. And I feel with the breadth football knowledge that guy's got, okay, his body hasn't really, it's not really strong enough to handle football now. But knowledge wise, football wise, the guy's got it. So for me, he should, that'd be top. Him and Alonso. And imagine Gerard as well, them three all working together. Well, a dream team for me. Well, you know. Uh... All right, so I'll go to you before I go to Jean's comment. Daryl. Yeah, um, personally, I don't want to see Thiago anywhere near the club again. If the, if you ask me, whether he's got the experience or not, 
Um, I, I just personally think it's got this has got a uh, Xavier Alonso and Torres uh, duo written all over this. The way Torres was talking the other day, he's taking his coaching badges as well. I can see Torres coming in a some kind of capacity. Yeah, yeah, he loves he, he loves the city, and I, and and it makes you think when he went, doesn't it? Yeah. Because I always remember him sitting on the Chelsea bench when we were playing them. I think it was the next game, and he was just sitting there like that. He was fuming. He didn't want to be sitting there. I know that for a fact, by the way. I know it. Can I just jump in and shock you? You know, I've been saying. I'd shoot Thiago in the head with a high-powered rifle to get rid of him when I was messing around, saying he should break his leg and half of it should fall off. I'd be up for him staying as a coach because he's such a brilliant ball retaining midfielder when he's fit. Now, if he's a coach, we don't need him on the pitch, where he never is anyway. So him and Xabi Alonso between them could cut up a better possession-keeping side than Pep Guardiola, I reckon, given a little bit of time. We'll show, we'll show that guy how to keep hold of the bloody ball. They'll never get it off us, I reckon, if Alonso and Thiago are working as a, in tandem, in like, you know, how to keep the ball in the Premier League. Well, I'm going to ask JK the same uh, question there, or the same comment. Will, oh, no, it's not. Go on. Would you uh, keep um, Thiago on as a coach? You know what? A hip injury takes a year, you know. If you ask that guy, bro, would you want to be playing this season? It could be one of your last. He'd be like, yeah. It's his body that says no, you know. And I think it's not your money, you know. It's not the fans' money, 180 grand he's getting. And FSG are not, they're tight gits anyway. So for me, that 180 grand isn't worth nothing. We're not going to give that to a new player. So if Thiago kept it, he does more off the pitch than, say, Kiate would, for example. It's like, look at Thiago this season. I think he's influenced the certain players in the team. 100%. He ain't, he ain't going to be standing around and not doing nothing. I've actually seen him doing it in a real game once where Klopp was like, what are you doing? He was trying to tell Nunes what to do, you know? So he's got it in him to tell people what to do. Mm. And for me, we, we couldn't have got rid of him anyway. He had to stay until his contract ran out in the summer. So mm. there's no, it's not really worth getting upset about Thiago being here, you know? He yeah. was there. There's been enough of the donkeys getting money paid for him for years in the Premier League. And you want to mark Thiago for a year because he ain't played football. You're crying like that. It's like ridiculous. True, true. I, I, I got a bit, got, you know. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. No, no, no. I exaggerate me when, you know, like for a laugh sometimes about saying he should break his leg properly, Thiago. But I'd be up for him staying as a coach with Xabi because them two are just, them two are two peas in the pod. And so is Guardiola in that the type of midfielders they were. They weren't all action midfielders. They were scheme and ball retaining midfielders. Okay. Well, anyway, you know, the, 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 that's Thiago and people are happy, unhappy, whatever, you know. So, uh, he can't... Yeah, but if but, it was, yeah but, I just want to quickly add that. If it was a tight run ship and the owners were keeping the manager happy with the signings, and the fans, then, yeah, you can moan about Thiago. But these guys have been messing around in the transfer market for years, FSG, you know? So that's why, for me, that 100 grand, 180 grand um, Thiago's getting a week, for me, I don't really, I'm not really bothered. Listen, listen, listen. Who have, you been, who have we brought in for the backroom stuff? Yeah, we brought in these, you know, we brought in these, uh, you know, these lads, haven't we? You know, we've got a director of football. I, I haven't a clue who he is, by the way. I don't know Richard Hughes. I haven't a clue. We've got another fella who's only had three years working at the club. You, you know, for Bournemouth, play for Bournemouth. Three years of scouting, right? Three years of scouting, and we, we brought him in here. Right, it reminds me of other uh, scenarios with uh, the uh, with the uh, the Irish fella. Right, so uh, this particular, you know, Thiago, what's being mentioned, I think that they'll have their own people to bring in. 
do you understand? They're all mates. So he might just say, I tell you what, do you want a job here, Joey? Hey, Liverpool. Oh, yeah, well, what's what, what it? You'll be one of the backroom staff, lad. You'll be running around with the players and kicking the ball and telling them what to do. Do you understand where I'm coming from here? Yeah. So that could be pie in the sky, you know, uh, having players. Eddie Howe incoming. Yeah. <laughs> Voila, voila. <laughs> the, you know that's like that's how the world rolls. Uh, keep your friends sort of uh, in positions where you're all together. You know um, that's how it works. And uh, at the end of the day, that lad who's coming in with Edwards, he's got a big job on his hands. You know, um, it's not seriously like we don't really know a lot about the the guy. You know, but. For me, I was expecting a little bit better, but people are going to say, I think the Edwards signing has actually covered that sporting director signing. It's like, oh, Edwards is coming, so it's all right, you know? So, like, Hughes is not really talked about a lot. But um, we'll see how he goes, you know? This summer, we'll see what he's up to, you know? Well, I'll tell you something, JK. I, I, like, I know he's, I know Richard Hughes has brought in a lot of good players for Bournemouth. But the ones he's made the boo boos on is, is Jordan Ives, seventeen million pound. Like, come on, like. Solanke, Brad Smith, Brad Smith. Yeah, Brad Smith. Solanke just like sort that. of turned it on this year. Yeah. Yeah, I've kind of got my doubt. I've got my doubts. I've got Every local fan has, they? So. Yeah, but I think it's the level that Bournemouth are at. They're going to acquire players who are on that type of level. Not like Liverpool's a different kettle of fish, you know. Mm. Um, so maybe he will broaden his horizons a little bit more, yeah. looking at the better, bigger players. So it's a risk, it's a gamble. But I hope you're right, JK. I hope I'm... <laughs> For me, it's the better of the club, you know. I don't really know this guy. I just want the club to be going forward. And this whole Edwards... So popper this season with Klopp leaving and this, that and the other, it's a bit embarrassing for me. Not really professional, professional. No. Well, what about uh, this uh, by Yusef? Very important, this. If Kelleher gets injured, we're in massive trouble. I would just say to that, uh, Dal. It's got a good point, to be honest with you. Well, bigger, bigger than a good point if we lose Kelleher. We are in massive trouble. I don't really want to see Adrian play another game for Liverpool. I want him shipped out. See you later. Goodbye. Um, I just, I don't know. We may have the defence to cover that, even if he, he may misses one or maybe a game if he does. But I don't want to get that into that scenario where he is, if he is out, to be honest. OK. What about you, Lee? I'll, I'll, I'll pivotal this this. If Keller, Kelleher gets injured, we're in massive, not like serious or, you know, we're in trouble, but he, he emphasises massive. No, Yusuf, bang on. That is absolutely spot on. If Kelleher gets injured, we are in massive trouble. Not trouble, but in massive trouble because um, Adrian's shit. And that's all there is what? to do. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, he won us the uh, World Club Cup. Adrian! <laughs> and then got us knocked out the Champions League when we could have defended it. The like Rocky. <laughs> yeah, okay. JK, Yusuf's uh, comment. Yeah, I never sort of predict injuries. Uh, it ain't the sort of thing I do where I'm like, oh, if Virgil gets injured, what are we going to do? So I don't really say anything about that. But for me, Adrian's third choice goalie, you know, the guy never plays for us. He gets paid oh. well. But um I think him along with Thiago and Mati probably all leave the club in the summer anyway. Would you yeah, there's another thing now. And last night people were actually saying, give Matt up another twelve month contract. No. JK. Not for me. Um age wise, we got him on a free. He's done wonders since he's come with us anyway. I think he's done pretty well. Um, but for me, it's like, yeah, time to move on. Frankfurt are interested in him. 
Uh, it depends on how he comes back from his injury. Uh, so in the summer, maybe there'll be a few more clubs lining him up. But for me, it's time to move on with my team, yeah. Well, at least, you know, what you said, you know, about how he comes back from playing. And well, everybody knows that he's running. But he's running down the shop for Thiago. <laughs> I can't wait a bit, please. <laughs> to get him Look, Joe Mass was a brilliant servant and he was an excellent player. Yeah. He's a smashing bloke behind the scenes as well, a bit eccentric by all accounts as Joe. So, like, I'm a big fan of his. But the time has come. Uh, same with Thiago. If he stays as a coach, that's okay with Alonso. But if he, you know, I don't want to see him as a player next season and ditto I can't with see that. him as a coach, Thiago. Yeah, I'm being yeah. honest there. I'm being yeah, yeah. honest. I really am. Um, it's a, like you, yep. Yeah. yeah, look, it is a good point as well. Paul Turner. And he's, he's uh, replying to uh, Keep It Real, because Keep It Real must have said, you know, I wouldn't mind Keller being in till the end of the season. I've no worries about Keller being in for the rest of the campaign. Mm-hmm. Zano? Yeah, spot on, Paul. For me, exactly the same. He's he's came in, he's, he's done fantastic. He's kept us in a lot of games. His distribution is second to anybody in the Premier League. His footwork is unbelievable. He passes, spreads. I've got no issues having Callahan in rest season. No issues at all. Okay. Lee? Yeah, I still prefer Alisson in goal for the running as well as Keller has done. I've not got any worries. I'm the same as Paul. I've not got any worries per se, but I'd still prefer Alisson in goal because he's a better goalkeeper and the best goalkeeper in the world. And it's pissed me off to no end that he won't be available until May or nearly May. You know, three weeks time, it's nearly bloody May, mate, and that's the end of the season. <laughs> well, it's my birthday on the 11th of May. I wonder if it would be all right for my birthday party that I'm giving for oh, all the Liverpool I'm going to get cake, Frank. And you are not all invited. Every one of you are not invited. You men. I'm going to have them up here. I've got a crack right, in there. Come off. See you later. <laughs> hey, mine's the 15th, Frank. My dad's is the 10th of May. And my granddad, George, my dad's dad, his was like the 12th of May or something stupid. So within five days of May, we were all born, granddad, dad, and son. Well, I'll tell you what, Frank, I'll buy you some shopping for your birthday. Thank you. Our Francis is on the 27th of May. There's a lot of my family in May. There's the 2nd, the 4th. The 11th May, our Stevie's is the 11th, uh, 18th, and uh, Francine's the uh, 27th. Oh, Something must be in the air, you know. Mine's yeah, August, Mine's in August, Frank. I'll just let you know, put a date. Mine's August the 10th, yeah? August the 10th? Yeah. Yeah, I'm away then. Oh, I'm on a cruise. Bloody curse I'm on, here, I'm on a six week cruise. From Lee's birthday right up to my yeah. to Christmas. <laughs> Lee's always panicking and he carries on by saying, Lee should have an alar- alarm bells next to him so he's the drunk. I do. I get worried. I get worried, don't I, about my team, about my club. I get freaked out. But as our Mary says, um, the final is in Dublin on the 22nd of May. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. What was you saying, Jay? Yeah, it's like we got Wolves on the Sunday, and then if we're in the final on the Wednesday, yeah, a few days rest. Mud. As Mr. Mannerin said, Frank, don't panic. <laughs> As Mr. Mannerin said, don't panic. This <laughs> is <laughs> Mr. Don't <laughs> And what, what is your name? Don't tell them, Pike. <laughs> That's the classic line ever. You, you silly little boy. <laughs> no, well, I remember the episode where um, Arthur Lowe... Oh, where we go? We're talking to people. Captain Madden's brother comes to see him, but it's, it's the same actor. It's Arthur Lowe playing the brother, and he's a bit of a drunk, and he's like some sort of rubbish Stop. actor or something, in the, or like that. Yeah. A comedian or something, and he, he, he don't get on, but he keeps calling Captain Manor and um, 
something like um I don't know, he's got a funny name for him anyway, and he has a bad cob on, but it was just him, you know, a split screen thing between the two of them or whatever. It was dead bloody funny. Is this the uh, film and TV review now of the debate back to that? <laughs> That's your fault, Daryl. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and uh, TW says, ship him out with matter. That's Thiago. What we going on about Thiago before? Um, but just keep it real, say so he says, I've wanted that to happen. I've wanted that to happen, been saying it for a, a time now about Thiago. Absolutely. I said it two years ago, believe it or not. I said it two years ago. Because when when the, the other fellow was Kaiser was out, he was always seems to be out. And not on gets mentions about Tiago. Can't wait for Tiago to get oh, piss off. And uh, Yusef, how confident are you uh, in us getting along? So that German journalist came out last week. Take no notice of him, Yusef, which coming here. Let me tell you now. Let me tell you. Let me point it out right now. Jabby is coming to Liverpool to take over the management. Do not listen to Florian Plettenberg, Yusuf. Yeah, yeah. No. No, yeah. He, he works, he's the guy he wants. Like, remember when Kane was still at Tottenham? He was every day on Sky Sports saying, he's coming, he's coming. Because they want the best players to come to Germany. It's like, makes their job more exciting. You know, they're talking about Harry Kane and Alonso. They don't want to lose their stars to England. So no. that's why they do a lot of that sort of uh, move where... Yep, Alonso's staying, he's coming to Bayern, you know, and all the fans in Germany are like, yeah, he's staying in Germany, you know. So I think they just do it because of that, bro. Especially Plattenberg, he's like top at doing that. I just hope that um, Xabi brings us back room stuff, you know, because those other two fellas are only uh, like scouts. And they're, they're just scouts. And, <coughs> you know, if, uh, if Xabi comes in, He'll know what players to bring in. And it'll be their job for the, well, you know, what FSG are like, for knockdown prices. You see what I mean? So that'll be his job. The only, get is, money the, only for is, uh, the only problem is you've got is don't get... Keep, keep it real, Who said, well, is anyone talking then? Oh, I was, but carry on. Carry on. I'm sorry. But, but no, what was you saying? I know, I was just saying, like, like don't get like excited because Jurgen pl plays a completely different way to, to uh, Xavi does. Xavi yeah. plays on the counter. But the yeah. point is, as well, the point is, uh, Tyler, is that we we give Xavi time. Yeah. Liverpool fans here, here, I'm talking about, we'll give them time. Uh, other other uh, managers, you know, could come unstuck, could come unstuck. Albeit that we give them time, but you know, don't don't forget, you know, when Rogers, oh, I hate saying his name, when the Irishman was uh, sacked, we wanted them gone before, long before then, long before then. I wanted them gone. I I didn't even want them anyway. Do you ever remember? This is Liverpool, five European, uh, you know, I, I hate saying a Champions League. I, I just don't like saying that. Five European Cup holders, right? Five times. Better than anyone at the time. At the time. And who do we play? We only had to beat them. And we play Basel at Anfield. And we went out. We went out and I said, Get rid of him now. Just get shot. Because we're going to win nothing. Yeah. And we didn't. I think I was too nice about Rodgers looking back because we'd been through a bad one with Hodgson. Then Kenny steadied the ship when Rodgers come in. I was too yeah. nice about him, Frank. I think I was too nice that's about where, That's where people fall down. And they go on about uh, X and Gillette. I was on the steps with the rest of us getting them out 
And people are saying, oh, remember the Hicks and Gillette. You know about if anyone criticises uh, these owners now? Yeah. Anyone who criticises these owners? They say, well, oh, they're better than Hicks and Gillette. That's all they fucking go on about. They've got no other uh, thing. They can't come out with another thing and say, well, what about, you know, piss off. Yeah. We had uh, David Moores. David Moores had nothing. He had the cop, the cop, and Anfield Road extended with his money. He had no money. He couldn't compete, but he had them built, and he was buying players at the same time. He wasn't there. Uh, uh, how much is he going to cost? Mm. So piss off with your, uh, you know, your, your Ixons, your lefties are better than Ixons, your left. There's no other excuse. I'm better than them anyway. Anyway, uh, I want to go to Mark Stevens here, Simons. Right, I'm going to JK. JK will be made up with this. Last six games versus Brighton, we won, we won one, drawn three, and lost two. So they seem to be a bogey team for us, in which worries me as Deserby will be going for this one like a cup final versus Klopp, JK. I'm not too worried about Brighton. Um, for me, I've just got two things on my mind this week. Uh, six points, two games at home. Um, and just get sort of some players back into playing time, you know. Um, Brighton bogey team, nah, under Ze Zebri, not as good as when they were under Potter, from, uh, in my uh, point of view. But I don't, I'm not really worried about Brighton. Too inconsistent, you know. They lost to Luton away 4 0. So that's just one game, but they're not winning like they used to, you know, and go to like. Teams aren't really scared of Brighton like they used to be. And for me, that's probably why I'm not so eager about the manager as well. I think if oh, he mate. had them up top top four, maybe top four, top three, yeah, his CV is going to look a little bit better, you know, next uh, at the end of the season. But for me, not too worried about Brighton. I think uh, bogey team, yeah, it happens, you know. But Sunday, three points is a must. I wouldn't call a bogey team, Brighton. I've done a minute, Lee. Hang on a minute. I was going to say that's an excellent point that what you made. Excellent reply. Now, Lee, what's your take on what Mark says? I wouldn't say they were a bogey team, but we have had difficulties with them. We drew at Anfield, um, and the two points we dropped there early in the season were a shocker, weren't they? Because it was that chance Gravenberg had to put us 3 1 up when he was like, Bang in front of goal, and it sort of hit his shin and went over the bar. It was it was harder to miss than score, and that was the end of that game. And then Robbo let that cross go because he didn't want to score an own goal when he should have just hit it and took the chance. Should have just put his leg in the way and took the chance because he let it go, and it went in the net, didn't it? But have you never know, answered the question. You're like a politician. Mm. But. Uh... No, we, I think we'll beat Brighton. I'm, I'm not worried that we won't beat Brighton. And I don't really see them as a bogey team, although they can be difficult. Okay. So it's just a difficult side for us to yeah. play against. Yeah. Like yeah. Wolves. Wolves are a very difficult side for us as well. What about you, Darrell? What Mark says? Uh, to, to know what, Frank, I have I have no problems with beating them. It's not like... it's not like they, 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 Correct, they've been our bogey side for a while, but... Two words, Klopp's leaving. The fans are going to be roaring them on like there's no other. The fans are play going to play the massive part in all this. Brighton have got players, key players missing. Matoma's missing. They got a lot of key players missing. I think we'll win comfortably. Okay. Is that gospel? Is it, um, Daryl? Is he definitely missing Matoma? Yeah, Matoma's out. Matoma's out here. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, well, Paul Turner says, as an omen, the last time we beat Brighton, we won the league. Here we go, then. Go. No That's it. That's it. And uh, Drunk says, Lee is talking nonsense. Sense? 
<laughs> in no sense am I talking nonsense about Brighton. In no sense am I talking nonsense about Brighton. We're going to beat them, lad. See his little pasty face, friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I watched the film show back on telly before, and my face weren't pasty at all. It had loads of lovely colour in it. Well, oh, yeah, you want to you, you wanna see it? I told you, you look like George Clooney in the new life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mary says, uh, rather have a manager that plays creative and direct football and not tippy tappy style, as we all know, can score three goals in six minutes when you go at it. Yeah. True. Old when you watch Man City, you can get bored, if you understand my point. Oh, they're, boring. they're boring to watch. Jake. You can get bored yeah, watching them boring. guys. Yeah. When I mean, you watch Liverpool, it's, it's cinema, you know, it's wow. Yeah. Well, the Soul Boy says, I'll stay with you, uh, JK. Uh, do you not think Alonso will want to bring in his own choice? He won't come otherwise. Very good point. Go ahead, JK. His own choice of uh, back staff and stuff? Yeah, it'll be his, back, yeah, it'll be his yeah. uh, backroom staff. I hope he does, and I hope he brings his medical team with him as well. Because this medical yeah. team we've had since, like, for years, what are they playing at, you know? That's one thing I said. Okay, Klopp's leaving. One good thing from that is the medical team, hopefully, I ain't going to swear, but go with him. So, because yeah. they they are not doing it right, man. Ever since that guy from Arsenal came, you know, he's been downhill. Arsenal have actually not really had serious injuries like they used to when he was there. So it was that guy, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, do, you, do you not think Alonso will bring his own choice? Lee, of his backroom staff? Uh, yeah, I think he's going to be one of them managers that wants his own people. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. I'm certain of that. that Alonso will want his own people. Well, when they beat Bayern... I don't know whether you've seen it. When he beat Bayern, he got his uh, backroom staff off, you know, off, off the uh, the bench and said, get up, and they all ran down. He, he was calling them on, come on. These are your fans as well. Does anyone see that? Or was it only yeah, me? That's, yeah. yeah, that's Thank what I you. love about. That's what I love about Javier Alonso as well. In, it, in that sort of way, he is, he is like Klopp at Klopp. Comes on, says, come on, let's, let's have it. Let's have it. That sort of gaffer. That's what we want. That's that's what we've been bought up on. Not Brendan Rodgers or crap like yeah. that. We want yeah. a manager like that with passion, not a boring manager. Yeah. Uh, use mugged Bournemouth says T W. Use mugged more. I think we. I think uh, Edwards mugged your uh, uh, Bournemouth to be honest by bringing in use. I don't know. I don't know who's, uh, you know, who's back with, well, these scouts, one's been at it for three years. Jason, oh, this is good, Jason. Uh, yeah, look, hang on, let me uh, keep it real. Let me just, oh, let me go on, oh, let me go and keep it real. Hang on, GA. Right, uh, Hughes wants to drop over Jen Elliott earlier in the career, so he obviously has a good eye. The talent. It's all right saying that. I want to. I I want to load me. I've got a good eye for talent. Keep it honestly. I have. I've got a great eye for talent. As soon as I, for example, right now, right this minute, I seen that Quonsa play for the first time. I said he's going to be great. This kid. I seen the uh, Bradley play. He's going to be great. This kid. I even looked at uh, Suarez when he was play playing for Ajax. And I said, he's so player if we get this fella. You see what I mean? So we've all got, you know. Uh, I don't go along with that. Actually. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not I having a go with it, keep it. I'm not having yeah. a go with it, honest to God. I'm not having yeah. a go, you know, because you know your score, you know your football, and I love you. Uh, to be honest with you, Frankie, I don't really think we could have bought Elliot any earlier because 
he was 16 when we got him, so I don't really think didn't really want to buy him when he was like 10, did we? But I suppose. All right, I'm gonna phone GA now. Let, let, let me go. All right, let's see what my hang on. Well, saying I don't ask Ali to blow the candles out, Frank. That just when I mentioned him there, uh, he'll be on the sidelines again with another injury. Yeah. And Dad says, uh, "My birthday a week Saturday, Frank." Happy birthday, Dad! Sorry, you mentioned me birthday. Anyway, only a year on Trent's contract is being t uh, tapped up by Madrid. Reminds me of McManaman. Talk about that going with you, J.K. While I uh, phone this uh, friend mm -hmm. of mine. All right, the producer. Thank you. Um, yeah, this Trent situation now, I've seen pictures of him training today, so that's a good thing. But you've got to understand that the guy's from Liverpool, you know, vice captain. And when he was a kid, he was dreaming about playing for Liverpool. Not captaining, just playing for Liverpool. So now he's got a chance to be captain of Liverpool, the team that he's actually supported as a kid. But Madrid... It's a whole different ball game. It's more show business. It's more glamour. Liverpool is sort of cold and windy. Mm. So, you know, young guys get attracted by certain things, you know. You might see Bellingham playing over there and thinking, oh, he's enjoying life, you know. But for me personally, I think it's the same guys who said Trent might go to Madrid are the same guys who were saying Bellingham might come to Liverpool. So for me, it's all probably bullshit. What do you reckon, Lee? Yeah, I'm not particularly worried that Trent's going to walk away at the end of his contract. It could happen, as you said, because uh, he could be attracted by Madrid. But um, I'm not particularly worried about that one at this juncture. Maybe I'll get more worried um, next season when he's coming towards the end of his contract. But for now, I'm not worried that Trent will leave us. Hmm. I just feel that... Um... They're saying he might be ready for the United game. Hopefully, I want to see him, really. I want to see him in the Sheffield United game, on the mm -hmm. subs bench at least, mm -hmm. so he can give us something uh, for the games that we got left. And, Daryl, what do you reckon, bro? Yeah, I, to be honest with you, JK, I, I can't see anything other than him signing a new deal in the summer, yeah. to be honest with you. I think all the Real Madrid stories are, are BS. One, mm -hmm. one reason why... Is Trent don't want to play it right back. Real Madrid want to right back, and Trent don't want to be a right back. He's made that publicly clear. He doesn't want to be a right back anymore. He yeah. can't defend. Real Madrid needs someone who wants to defend. That's one BS rumor. And seventy-five million. Are you having a laugh? It's worth double mm -hmm. than double than that for a start. Exactly. I think when you look at the tra transfer world right now, for me, Trent, he can go for a hundred. 110, 120, no problem. no problem. You know, he's 25 years old. Just got injured now, you know. Um, but all in all, best for me, the best passer in the Premier League. Well, without a doubt. You know? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Like, for me, uh, also, he he could play for any team he wants to. I just feel that, you know, when you were younger and you used to be a striker, and then you ended up dropping it at, at, in at right back. Your initial yeah. reaction is, I want to get forward. So, I think... Trent, when he was younger, probably played attacking football at the park in training. And all of a sudden, he's gone back to right back. Now he's sort of outgrown that position and he wants to go, you know what? I want to play more front, up, up top and stuff and create in games, you know? Yeah. Just that, just this one here. Alonso would join for probably three years and hand the reins over to Iago for saucy ball. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon Perfect. about that, Lee? Perfect. Yeah, as I say, like um, I've been moaning, saying like, oh, I'm annoyed, annoyed about like Thiago's fitness, but I'd be happy for him to stay as a coach, like uh, alongside mm -hmm. Alonso, because like I said, Alonso's style is probably going to be not radically different to what we're playing like under Klopp, but there will be a difference, um, and I think Thiago could um, possibly be a good coach alongside Alonso. That's if it happens. So it's only a rumor, isn't it? At present. At this mm -hmm. juncture, it's only um, part of the rumour mill. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I'd be happy for him to be a coach, like, with his uh, his insight. And don't forget, he's played for Barca and Bayern. 
So exactly. in this in this respect, we're not saying, oh, he's going to come in and play good. What we're saying is he's going to bring what he's learned to his uh, coaching position from Barca and Bayern and what he learned under Guardiola by playing for Guardiola. He was Guardiola's Rodri, wasn't he, at Bayern? Mm-hmm. Go to you, know the line, you, reckon, you know what I reckon is going to happen, JK? In my personal mm-hmm. opinion, I think this is what will happen. Three years' time, Alonso um, says, "Real Madrid have come calling for me now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna walk over to Madrid now. See you later." And then, I personally think Jurgen will come back after the three years. Mm-hmm. That's my. That's what I think will happen. Okay, I think he will. You know what? The way the football is nowadays, like when you see man- managers like Klopp and Pep, look how long they've been at clubs now. Managers don't last a year in a job nowadays, you know? I don't think we're going to see that in the future where managers stay nine, ten years at a club. What do you reckon about that, Daryl? Well, to the, to, I just think the way the way he loves the, the club, the way he's fallen in love with the city, the way he's fallen in love with the fans like none other, he he's he just he knows now that he needs a, he knows he needs a break. He's going to take mm-hmm. a six months now sabbatical. Going go into will probably go into another job for a couple of years. Maybe he might maybe he might go to Spain for a couple of seasons. But I I, I personally do think Alonso will come for the three years, and I do think Jurgen will return after the, Alonso's gone. I, I really do. That'd be good. That'd really be good. Did. The guy needs a rest, you know. I, I think in that interview he gave when he said he was resigning, I've seen a face in Klopp I've never seen before. It was one of my soul tired guys, you know. Uh, and also he said, I don't want to, but I have to. And that yeah. comment there sticks with me. I'm thinking, why does he have to? I think maybe health reasons. Um we don't know what goes on behind the scenes at, at the club, you know. We think we do because everything's all rosy and nice and everything, but we don't really know, know what goes on. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I'll maybe <laughs> stop a cup of coffee. Uh, no. See, you're listening to me now, Frank. That's that's the tip all you need to drink, mate. Yeah, no, I, I don't like coffee, but this is um, cappuccino. The sweet cousin of coffee. Either that, <laughs> either that, or, either that, or we're boring you. So you need someone to wake you up. Yeah. <laughs> needs me. There's uh, look, Frank. Frank Carlisle dropping the eps. So he's the drunk. That bombs. Language, Frank. I, I just get too excited. No, it depends on the topic, what? Frank. Um, the FSG topic. I've <laughs> seen a lot of guys just. <laughs> Like Scarface, you know, Al Pacino in Scarface. Just like all of a sudden. Exactly. Oh, but you know what? Is about. I went with it. It's Jake. It is. It is. It's the man. I would guess he's coming on. Jamie Phillips. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> all right, Joe. All right, Jamie. See, we'll be all after that. Unfortunately, have you had the bad news? The man is in. Everyone heard the bad news? No. <laughs> uh, Alonso is not happening. Alonso is cool? not happening. Breaking news, Alonso to Liverpool is not happening. What, Paul, Joyce, Paul, Paul Joyce Paul Joyce, is tweeting it. Chris Bascom's tweeting it. Everyone's tweeting it now. It's going everywhere. Alonso, Alonso to Liverpool will not happen. He will not be Jurgen Klopp's replacement. It's how Sorry. Have they given a reason as to why it won't happen? Uh, Liverpool don't believe that Alonso wants to join. I, I kind of, I get that, I get that. And if he wants is, to do a com- Champions League campaign with them, you know, he's got well, a good the team last there. Few days, the last few days as well, we have been hearing a lot of stories the last few days about Ruben Almerin, don't we? Yeah. That's all that's been talking about. And since Mark Edwards got the job, all we've been talking about is Ruben Almerin. So it looks like it's going to be Ruben Almerin, which was my second choice. Anyway, I'm happy so I'm with that ready. anyway. I'm happy with that. Mm. But don't be surprised. We've raised a bomb. 
Reeves and Paul. I wouldn't be surprised. That's what I don't like about all this crap, to be honest. Anyway, can I just, uh, before we start uh, talking serious football, I'd just like to. I don't know, where is it? I'd just like to bring in a, a t shirt. And this is a design by uh, Gene, Gene Gray. Mm -hmm. And have a look at this, boys and girls. Isn't that absolutely brilliant? Oh, look. Perfect. Part of our DNA, and there's the uh, the heart with the you know the the the, the bed, mm -hmm. and at the bottom you'll never walk alone, and obviously the symbol of uh, DNA itself. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Who's the guy Great in the uh, in the shirt? Sorry. <laughs> Who's the guy <laughs> in the shirt? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've been framed. Might be accident. You never know. But anyway, that's the shirt. I'll be showing it more. I'll be showing it more, to be honest. If, uh, if uh, she allows me and uh, the prices and everything else. Yeah, but it, I think it would be ideal, you know, if you're going away on holiday because it's nice and white, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff. I think it's uh, absolutely fab. I really Jamie, is, Jamie is right, Frank. Alonso is set to stay in Germany. Yeah. So... Did it say where he's uh, staying, or if he's staying, or if he? Um... Yeah, 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 it looks like he's he want Alonso actually wants to stay at Leverkusen, yeah. which I knew it. You know, I'm giving him credit for that. Give him credit for that. Yeah, I give him credit if he's if that's the fact. But could it be a smoke screen? You know, everyone's saying and oh, he's going to stay and everything. Well, all of a sudden, bang, he's here. I, that's, I know. Yeah, that's the way we look. That's the way I look at it. To be honest. I don't uh, want uh, to Ruben say. Almerin. Ruben Almerin and so Paul Joyce is now saying that Liverpool are now looking at either Almerin or Deserby. He's also a favourite now, Almerin. Yeah. Don't want to Zerbi, I'm sorry. As Ian McHale says, Deserby ringer for David Guest can't be having him as our manager. <laughs> and uh, Deserby is really Mario from Cop TV. Is that David guess that fella who married Liza Minnelli? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, He's brown bread now, though, isn't he? Yeah. I liked him. He was funny, but he was bloody weird looking, wasn't he? He was so weird looking with the plastic surgery and all that. But he was funny. Yeah. He was a funny guy, that David Guest. He made me laugh when he was on telly, him, that. Right? He was a celebrity big brother, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a good bloke. He was funny, him, <laughs> Yeah, so apparently Liverpool has spoken to Alonso and their indications they've gave him is what he wants to stay at Bay Leverkusen. And now there's more news coming out that Bayern Munich are now stepping up there looking for a manager that ain't Alonso either. So, yeah. Deserving. Deserving. So Bayern Munich and Liverpool both pulled out for Alonso. So they must he must have gave him indication that he wants to stay at Leverkusen. What you said there is right, Jamie, that you give him points if he's going to stay at Leverkusen because... Being offered bigger jobs and staying there shows some sort of character, doesn't it? Like that he's saying, okay, I'm not going to walk out on you if I win you the title. But um, I'm disappointed. And, I'm very disappointed, I'll say that. And if he didn't feel like he could do the job after Jurgen Klopp, I don't want him anyway. I don't care who he is. Now, if he doesn't feel like he can do the job anyway because he's coming in after Jurgen Klopp, then I'd rather not have him. If that's how he's thinking. Yeah, well, to be to be fair, Jamie, to be fair, Jamie, uh, FSG have got their right man. If it is Amram, don't spend a penny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. 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 Again, True. Amy, Amy says, Paul Joyce just released a story saying Alonso now unlikely, unlikely to feature on Liverpool's shortlist for their manager bollocks. Thing is, you see. When we uh, brought it, when the uh, Edwards came in, the very first tweet that was sent out was that Alonso was an honest three three month short list. Does anybody ever read that? Yeah, Ed Edwards Edwards never wanted Alonso. Exactly. And Edwards exactly. Is in charge of our football club now. So mm. the thing is, exactly. I, I do, I do, I do sort of trust Edwards. I, I do trust him because. 
you know, he he's got a lot, so much right in the past, and you know, he's the one, he's the one who told FSG to sack Brendan Rodgers and get Jurgen Klopp, didn't he? So I don't I have faith in him, man. And look, I don't look the Alonso stuff. I've said it before. To if you look at out, if you go by what Mark Edwards is looking at between Almerin and Alonso. Almerin's done a fantastic job in three years that he's been at Sporting. He has done a fantastic job. Equally just as good as what Alonso's doing in his first year. But Alonso has never gone through adversity at the moment. So we don't actually know what Xavi Alonso's like if he goes through adversity. You know, when you know, results ain't going his way, he's having a bad time. We don't know yet. So I've always said Alonso is my first choice. Almerin was my second choice. So if it's Almerin, I'm quite happy with Ruben Almerin. I think he'll do a good job at our football club. You know, so I'm quite happy with that. But I know a lot of Liverpool fans wanted uh, Alonso. And I understand it. It's an emotional attachment, ain't it, with Shabby Alonso. And I get it. But I, I, so I'd be pretty cool if it's Almerin, to be fair. What about you, JK? I'll go around there. Uh, I'm just, that's a very good point, what you made there, uh, Jamie. Honestly, it really is. Uh, what about you, JK? Has this disappointed you in any way? And uh, what's he, you know, what's he, uh, WC? Mm -hmm. I suggest FSG up a clop and open checkbook. Yeah, they never do that. They wanted to get never. Anyway. Yeah, they brought Edwards back in front instead of getting Lane Klopp there anyway, in my opinion. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I'm actually not really disappointed about Alonso because I'm not really, I'm the type of person where I would wait until it's official. Because we look at the world we live in. Tom, Dick and Harry is coming out with news left, right and centre about yeah. this is happening, this is happening. Yeah. And I don't fall for that. So until it's official from the club that yeah. we are doing this, then I will say, yeah, I'm disappointed or not. But at this See, moment... the language is, JK, unlikely. Yeah. That's what you've got to look at. Unlikely. It's not like he's not coming here. That's it. Unlikely. And that's why he's saying that Arnold said bollocks. There you Cold go. So, who's telling the, the truth on this topic, you know? The thing with Alonso Liverpool, can't, Alonso can't Liverpool, really though. come out in an interview and say, oh, yeah, I'm interested in the Liverpool job. And also, we've got a t title to win. That's why I don't really want to get involved in this manager's sort of job position, yeah. like sort of news. I don't really want to get involved with it. I'm just bothered about this season right now with Klopp. The thing, the thing with Liverpool, though, if they decide someone's not going, if they get wind that a player isn't going to join or someone's not going to join their club, they just move on. And <laughs> we've seen that in the past. They just move on. So if. They've had any inkling. And the thing is, I think we'd be a bit naive not to think that Dave's not been speaking. You know, Alonso would be speaking to Liverpool and Bayern Munich. There's no doubt about it. His agents have been speaking behind the scenes. And if they gave any inkling that they, he's not coming, then Liverpool will move on. That's the way they work. They always have done. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, it, they need... And the thing with Liverpool, they need to get... They need to make sure they get this appointment in quite quickly. And I think... You know, Ru last week, all this week, sorry, all we've been hearing is this news about Ruben Almerin. You know, his odds are going down, his odds are slashing, and, you know, there's been more stories about him, and the Alonso stuff's been pretty quiet. And then this comes out today. I think since Michael, uh, since Michael Edwards came to Liverpool, back to Liverpool, I think he has made it very clear that Almerin's his guy. And that's the route to go, go down, and... It's interesting, man. I'm happy with Almerin. If it's Ruben Almerin, I'm happy. I'd you know, be, just... yeah, I'd be happy with Almerin from what I know about him. But mm. um, as far as um, us knowing what is going to happen, I can wait. You know, until the end of the season, I'm okay waiting. I know we're all desperate to know, and <laughs> if truth be told, yeah, I don't want to know. But I can wait. You know, I can wait a few weeks because that's all we've got to wait is a few weeks, really, isn't it? It's only a handful of weeks, like until the season ends. And then we'll be finding out soon enough who the new manager is. But yeah, Jamie, I'd be happy with Amaran. From what I know of Amaran and from what I've heard and seen, uh, I'd be more than happy with him as a new manager. Mm. Yeah. And uh, TW says, mm -hmm. JK, F FSG chose Edwards over Klopp. 100%. Think about that. 
Mm-hmm. That's why I said, you know, I, I said it on Jamie's uh, and he mustn't have seen it or no one's seen it. And I said, who would you rather have? This is when Edwards first came. And I said, who would you rather have, Klopp or Edwards? Because everyone was going on Jamie's uh, thing. Oh, this is great. You know, this is a great sack. This is a great move. Edwards is coming back. We've done well without Edwards. We did. He went, so we did well. Look at us. Look at us. Where we are today without Edwards. Yep. And look at the squad he's built. And people forget that. And there's what uh, Edwards, uh, cho- Edwards chose. You know, it's been chosen over Klopp. I'd rather have Klopp. Who would you rather have, Jamie? Klopp or Edwards? Uh, sure. Well, I might say get cancelled. Um, uh <laughs> Even though I'm thinking well, you've answered it. You've answered it. You answer yeah. like <laughs> I think I think I, I I obviously Klopp look I look I'm gonna break it down like this. I think Klopp wants to do things his way in and I understand that. But football's moved on now and football's changed. And it can't be like it used to be. If you look at Jurgen Klopp, I keep saying Jurgen Klopp is a football romantic. He likes the old-fashioned way of football. You know, the manager is in charge of everything sort of scenario. That's what Jurgen likes. And he had argument. We know he had arguments with Edwards because Edwards wanted certain players over what Klopp wanted. And Klopp thought, I've been here long enough now. I deserve the players I want. You know, and if you look at some of the players that Klopp and Pep Linders have bought the last two seasons, I don't think we would have bought them a few years ago if Edwards was still around. And then players, are, some of them players are players that the fan base are not happy with. You know, like your Graven Birches and your Gak pose and stuff like that. Um, so I think you need, the way football is now, it's just, football is different to the way it used to be. You need a sporting director in your football club. You need a CEO in your football club. You need that infrastructure in your football club, and then you need a coach. They're not managers anymore. They're coaches, aren't they? They're, they don't need to manage anything off the pitch. They just coach on the pitch. And that's what they are, the head coaches. And I think Jürgen likes being the dad to everyone. He likes controlling. He likes that control. And managers, like Klopp's got an ego. We can't sit here and pretend he ain't. He's got a massive ego, like any other, any successful manager has got. And if we want to move on in the world of football, unfortunately, we can't get left behind. Look, Liverpool got left behind when the Premier League started, as many of us know. You know, we got left behind because we did things the old way, you know, keeping the boot room, playing within and all this. And we got we got left behind. And Man United and Arsenal, and all that, they went further in front in the 90s. And we had to play catch up, catch up, catch up. Now we've caught up. We need to change the way. We need to join how football is now. I don't like it because I'm a football romantic. You guys probably don't like it either, but we can't afford to get left behind again constantly. So if football's changing that way, unfortunately, we've got to change with it. You know, we but can't we're afford it. We're, we're, we're fighting for the treble. How are we yeah, being left yeah. behind? The thing is, though, if you look at Liverpool's best times under Jurgen Klopp, yeah, it is like when he was sporting director. You know, when we won Champions League and Premier League and all that, that's when he was our sporting director. Yeah. Well, he never managed the side, Jamie. Yeah, he but look at Man United. Look at Man United when David Gill. Look at Man United when David Gill left. It all went shit up. It all went wrong. You know, Alex Ferguson will tell you. He could only do the job he did because he had Gil next to him, helping him with the stuff behind the scenes. And that is so important. And you, you talk about United fans. They will say to this day that David Gill leaving was as massive as Alex Ferguson leaving because they had no infrastructure anymore. And if you look at the last 10 years at Man United, they've got zero infrastructure. Don't matter how much money they spend, what managers in place, behind the scenes is a mess. 
and that's the infrastructure's disappeared. You know, Man United have had proper good managers. Like Mourinho's no bum. He's one of the greatest managers of all time. You know, they, they've had great managers, but it, it's not worked because the infrastructure behind the scenes is not correct. So you have to have the infrastructure right behind the scenes. And, like, it, 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 I would love it if Jürgen and Michael Edwards and all that could just get along and do the job and everyone knows their roles and, you know, and we work beautifully and seamlessly like we did before. But it looks like that can't be the case anymore. And well, he's leaving. I, I, well, I know Jamie, Jamie, I know something, honestly, mate, I do. And it was Klopp. When Edwards left, it was left up to Klopp and Klopp wanted to spend money. He wanted to spend on two Shumani. And he was told, no, you can't have them. And it blew up in the faces when he wanted to sign Bellingham. I think the Bellingham one's the only one that's... Uh, no, Shumani uh, as well. Believe that. Believe that. Shumani. Yeah, but we, we bid for Chumani. The problem is, when we bid for Chumani, Chumani went on live TV and said, I'll choose who I'll go to at the end of the Champions League final. Yeah. yeah. And then Jurgen Klopp came out and actually said after that, he's like, you come to Liverpool because you want to join Liverpool, not if we win a trophy or not win a trophy. So I think I think part of the Chouameni deal, I don't blame anyone on that. I actually blame Chouameni. He fucked up. Him. Like, he could have been a Liverpool player. He opened his mouth. Klopp didn't like it. So we know Klopp don't like that kind of personality. He he come to so I don't blame him. I don't blame anyone for the Chouameni stuff. I do blame the club for the route, obviously, for the Drew Bellingham stuff. That's the club's fault. There's no doubt about that. But well, what about what Herbert Lom says? Um... Ed, like Edwards, going to get his own choice as manager. So he's going to pick the manager. And he's yeah. the CEO of the club. That's his job. And he loves Zerbi. <clears throat> now I'm yeah. a big Italian fan, as you know. Io parla molto lingua italiano, molto bene. I speak Italian. I don't mind Zerbi. I don't want him. All I right, want so I'll ask the lads. No, no, I Why? I'll ask the lads. I'll ask the lads. I want Klopp. That's who I want. Or yeah, Xavi. He'd come to the That's end of his, his tenure. Yeah, you know what, though? The, when you look at the CEO and the manager's position, it's like a guy who runs a restaurant, ain't got a lot of money, and he brings the ingredients from the, from the wholesalers, takes it back to this guy in the kitchen, and says, hey, make something out of that, you know, to make a bit of money. And um, that's how I was seeing the Edwards Klopp sort of relationship <laughs> um they didn't chuck big money at Klopp. Klopp bought virgil and allison you know man city spent a quarter of a billion on their defense they've like for me they've let Klopp down big time with funds and in the way they've treated him this season and for me Klopp is number one like compared to edwards i think a lot of, <laughs> of the fan base are really sure liking edwards that. because of the business side of the game i understand that a club needs to run sufficient but we're liverpool we're not like Brighton, West Ham, you know, we're Liverpool. We, we make enough money, you know, but we still have tight owners who give us... Yeah, or, well, we have the, or we have the right owners for this football in this day and age. I mean, you see so, everyone, look, we're playing against Man City, right? We've got 115 charges against them. We've got to remember, Sergio Aguero was bought by Etihad Airlines, not by Manchester City. You know, it, 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 it's not, it's not as, you know, the, you look at Chelsea, they spent a hundred, I keep saying this, Chelsea spent one billion pound on transfers in a 12 month period. It has never been seen in football since the dawn of time, since football was invented. No one has ever seen anyone spend a one billion pound on transfers in a 12 month period. Yeah. And they've made a hundred million pound loss and they go finish mid table two years in a row. Because they got no infrastructure. This is what I'm trying to say. I agree with everyone about money being spent, but you've got to have infrastructure at your football club. Man United have spent more money in the last 10 years than any Premier League team, even more in City. But because they've got no infrastru infrastructure, they're struggling. It, this, this infrastructure behind the scenes is so important to your football club. And if I just. I don't know, like what Jurgen. We'll never know why Jurgen wants to leave till he writes a book. 
as far as I'm concerned. Until he writes a book and tells the world, then I'm going to just take the man for what he says right now. But I think there's look, it's probably a bit of it where he's fed up with the owners. He's probably fallen out with John W. Henry, and if that's the case, so be it. You know, people fall out of each other. I don't mean they hate each other. They can fall out of each other business-wise. But he fell out of them. He's fallen out of them. You move on. You know, life moves on. Like, the pe like people don't know the future. There's no... You know, everyone thinks our oh, clock leads were finished, we're done, that's it, it's game over. The way I look at it is the club are putting an infrastructure in there for when clock leaves to try and keep the club keep going to be successful. So uh, next season, the year after and the year after that, Liverpool could be just as successful as they were with Klopp. Like, no one knows. Uh, Pep Guardiola is not going to be at Man City forever. He's going to eventually leave one day. And then that's the best manager in world football out of our league. Isn't Pep only contracted for one more season? Yeah, and he hasn't signed a new deal yet. And I think Pep Guardiola is waiting on the appeal for Ma like what happens with Manchester City. Mm. So if City get done in all this, we're going to look back on it and go, we competed at that level against cheats if they get done for it. And we should have won three or four Premier Leagues in that time where they cheated everyone out of it. So there's a lot of context to all this, but... yeah. Uh, it's like Klopp's a legend and he'll always be loved. As I keep saying, I will talk about Jurgen Klopp to my grandchildren the way Frank probably talks to his kids about Bill, like about Shankly. Yeah, you know, it'd be like that. But we've got to move on. Shankly left, man. Shankly left. Paisley left. Al Gleish left. You know, all the greats leave football clubs eventually. What Liverpool got to do is just make sure that they try and put a great infrastructure in place that lets the next person who comes in still try to be as successful as a manager before. And the way I'm looking at it right now, that looks like what the club is actually trying to do. So I'll give the club credit for that. Well, OK. Yusuf says, I don't trust FSG to get Amaran. Paul Taylor says, double whammy, Klopp going along, so not coming. And, you know, we're all upset, being honest, you know, and I don't know these people. I don't know these people, to be honest. And as to keep it real, uh, so he's going to be leaver, uh, going to be Leverkusen, so he will join Real in two years. He's, if he's being offered the job and he refuses, that's it. He won't come back. I told you that, Fred, didn't I? I said I bet he's yeah. there. And Liverpool fans like myself will just say, "Well, uh, all right, you never chose us, no piss off." Yeah, we're going to have a chance. Yeah, I think it's a one-time offer this summer for Xabi. I can't see him coming in after that because we'll. Bring, if he doesn't come, someone else will be coming in and we're not going to be shifting them aside like in, in a heartbeat, are we? You know, we're going to be giving them a chance, whoever it is, and wanting to see them bed in and make their put their stamp on the club, make their mark. So I think it is a one-time offer for Xabi, whether he comes or not this summer. And if he doesn't come, I doubt we'll ever see him as our manager. Unless it's in like 10 years or something when he's much older and he's been around the block more and been to more big clubs and then ends up here. Yeah, but you know what it is, bro? It's the timing. The guy's trying to win a Bundesliga and they're trying to ask him, do you want the Liverpool's job on the side? It's like, it's fucking crazy. You know? No, I, know People... I think he's not coming. I think we just got to get... He's not coming. Well, as I said to you, Jamie, who would you prefer? Klopp or Edwards? And you, oh, you know, I prefer Klopp. I need, I need a working relationship. I don't want Klopp to do all the work. This is what I'm trying well, to say. Klopp, well, just let me there finish this. What these are saying, and so it's only a simple question. Klopp over Edward says Captain Sal. Paul Turner, Klopp is a no-brainer. Him over anyone. Mm. And CW says, Jamie, that's a shocker. Obviously what you said. Gene says... Uh, Jesus, I'd, I'd, I'd take the gaffer over the mall. That's what the girl mm -hmm. says. You know, so it's it's just nuts, you know, the, the, the way... The, we're not arguing, by the way. We're just asking, you know, we, we want the best for Liverpool. I do, I've always wanted the best for Liverpool. And uh, when that, uh, the Irishman, I won't mention his name, ever mention that man's name, ever. And I don't want to mention on this show either. To be honest, uh, because Irish, I yeah. didn't want him. I didn't want him at the beginning because I knew that we'd go Percy. Forget their <laughs> option. Forget him. 
forget it. Forget it. You know what I mean? Forget it. And uh, when we when, when Klopp came, it was a toss up between him and uh, Ancelotti. It was a toss up. I wanted Ancelotti, you know, because I knew how he worked. And Ancelotti is a Liverpool fan after 84, 1984 final against Roma because he played in that final against us. Right? I wanted him and he became a big Liverpool fan. Uh, but unfortunately, he never come here now uh, after being with Everton. That's the end of him. That's the end of him. So I wanted him and uh, he changed the old format of Liverpool Football Club. You mentioned Shankly, Jamie, and spot on, you know what I mean? I love Shankly. I loved him like a dad. And uh, this fella's the same. This fella is the same, Jürgen Klopp. He's a hands-on manager. Does it, did someone showed a picture today, and it was uh, Sadio Mane. Sadio. And you want to see, he's older than him, he's older than him, his last game, he's older than him. And you want to see the face on Sadio Mane. He's more or less saying, will you let me go? Albeit, you know, the spin was, I want to go. As you know, you know, there's lots of spin. I think uh, some people should go into a circus and get uh, them little sticks with plates on. I think they'd be phenomenal, to be honest, spinning, the way they spin. I and, um, as TW says, yeah. I love you, Jamie, but you're wrong on this. Klopp <laughs> turned these players into world-class team, not or yeah, and I didn't say you didn't. This is where people are not listening. It's about infrastructure behind the scenes, yeah? You've got to have a working relationship behind the scenes that can tell the manager, I'm going to find you the players that are going to work beautifully under your work under your world-class management. So we're going to find the players for you, and then players are going to come to you, and they're going to suit the way you want to play. They're going to yeah, I get system. where you're coming from on that one. Yeah, they're going, to seek your, they're going to seek your technical ability that you want to play with. They're going to suit the high press. You know, they're going to suit this style you want to go with. And so you need that infrastructure. This is what I'm trying to say. I would rather they just all was able to get along and work together, and then you've got the perfect marriage, don't you? But obviously that's not the case, but... I think you're right that things are evolving, yeah. aren't they? And we don't see yeah. managers in charge for as long as we used to, like JK said just before you come yeah. on, Jamie. And I think you're right in the infrastructure thing in that football's evolving in, in terms of the way it's run, um, back room and everything. And you have got to get all your stars aligned, haven't you? Like to get it right. Like you said about when Gill disappeared from United. Things went even worse for them, and they started buying some really shit players, like for ridiculous fees and wages. So, and that fan, I saw that comment there about fan club ownership. Fan club ownership don't work. Only have to look in Germany. You only have to look in Germany. It's uh, the biggest team in that league runs that league. You know, because you have got fan club ownership, it don't work. Fan club ownership don't work. As Keeper Nail says, uh, watch your Liverpool fans have a meltdown because they were too invested in Alonso. They're, they were emotionally invested. This is the issue. If I'm honest, I'm I too wasn't. invested in the current I season wasn't. to be asked thinking about the new manager. Exactly. exactly. When, the, when the season finishes, that's when I'll be thinking about mm -hmm. it. We, have, we mm -hmm. haven't got games coming up and we're not on for the treble. Yeah, um, I'm too invested in the current season to be too invested in the new manager talk at the moment. Bang on, bro. Bang on. And I think it's the art of how Edwards and Klopp fell out. Klopp decides he's leaving. Edwards walks straight in. I think it's the art of how that all happened is what's pissed off the fans. If Edwards came at the end of the season, to tell you the truth, there wouldn't be so much sort of anger towards that whole situation. If Edwards just came at the end of the season, even though we got the job now, but they let people know at the end of the season. Yeah. Right. Then you wouldn't have got much of a circus going on with this topic, you know. But what Lee just said though, bang on. I got so much invested in this season, the Premier League title, I am bothered about the next manager at this time. 
what I need to ask everyone, yeah, because everyone wants Alonso, right? And I get it, it's an emotional investment. But Alonso has had one and a bit seasons at Bayer Leverkusen and this is in his first real job because before that he was with the youth team at Real Sociedad. And it's his first real job, right? We've seen De Zerbi. No one wants De Zerbi, although he's done a good job at Brighton. Some people don't want Almer in, although he's done a good job at Sporting. What is everyone so invested in the Alonso side of it? Is it just because he's a Liverpool player? Yeah. Former Liverpool player? He likes and, his sport. And there's kids born here as well. Yeah, it's, it's an emotional attack. That's what I'm saying. Thing, honestly, Jamie. I That's know you're I'm a saying. good so, lad and I love you, but you don't get the Scouse philosophy. You really no, don't. what I'm saying, it's an emotional attachment. That's what I'm saying. It's an emotional attachment. And I get it. It's an emotional attachment. But because it's that's what I'm trying to say, you need people working behind the scenes that don't have that emotional attachment because they want to do the best for the football club. So the best for the football club actually might be Ruben Almerin. Ruben Almerin might be actually better for our football club right now than Xavi Alonso. But because we're fans... And fans think differently, because that's what we are. We bleed and love the football club. So we think with more emotion in our heart than we do with our brain, because that's just the way we are as football fans. We're going, we want Alonso because of that. But for the football club, it might actually be better to get Al in instead of Alonso. Do you see what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say. No, I, I, I totally agree with you. You, you talk a lot of common sense. This is this is why we, we love you. This is why you've got a fantastic uh, show you know what i mean this is why yeah. this is why i stay you've come on at midnight <laughs> Just, but anyway they could keep linders for a season if they can't get emerald amaro who i heard is going to barca now mark mark simons he actually lives in spain and he gets all the uh the information so you know what if we don't get amaro and as someone said before, don't be surprised that uh, Edwards will choose the manager. And I, I said this, when I, I said to you, I don't know whether it was to Lee or to JK or to Daryl this morning, That's don't amazing. be surprised if we get the ball that manager. What did I say to you, Daryl? Yeah, he said to me, I've, I've just got a... I said to you, Frank, there's one manager that I did not want and I can see this coming. Because he's friend, he's friends with him. Yeah, it's with Deserby. All the signs are starting to come to him now, and I'm not. I am pissed off. I'm not going to lie. Well, Leo, there is a question. Uh, Anfield Raw question for Jamie. The Klopp philosophy is in the club. Do you not agree? Replacing Klopp will be hard, and as an overseer like Edwards going to implement or replace Klopp's togetherness. Yeah, you. Any if any elite manager leads a football team, it's very hard to get a manager better than that. So you're always going with a dip. You know that's just obvious facts. I don't want a manager that's Jurgen Klopp like. I've said this many times. I don't want a diet coke version of Jurgen Klopp. You know, I just don't want it. I want full fat. I want the full thing. You know what I mean? I like that terminology, Jamie. Yeah, that's, I don't want a fake Jurgen. So if Jurgen Klopp is leaving, he's one of a kind. No, God did not build another Jurgen Klopp in that image. So there's no point looking for one. Yeah. So what you got to do, you got to go down a different path. You got to go down a different path and find a different kind of manager. But you got to. But any manager that comes in, they're not going to be stupid. This is what we have got to remember as well. If Ruben Almerin comes in, he's a young manager. He's 39. He's going to come to Liverpool if he does come in. And he's not going to just rip up the rule book straight away. He will keep what Jurgen Klopp's done at Liverpool for the time being and then slowly work his way into that as he goes. You know, he would keep what Klopp's done at the club, keep everything going and ticking over for, for a little bit. And then little bits here and there, he'd be implanting his little bits. Maybe we'll play three at the back, but we'll play the high press still like Jürgen did, you know, and it, it just implant his little bits here and there as the season goes on. And as the years go on, he start to take over his whole philosophy or go into the football club. Because any manager goes in the football club now after Jürgen and just goes, right, what you've done for nine years under Jürgen, forget about it. This is why we're playing now and the tactics we're playing. That's suicide. 
It's just suicide. So you got. Uh, I, I think any new manager comes in. Yes, he's not Jurgen Klopp because, as I said, God only made one Jurgen Klopp, and that's a always will be a legend to our football club. But well, as Norman says, I'll come on with two things. Right, uh, Jamie, FSG, do what's best for FSG, not us. We the people are Liverpool Football Club. Alonso gets us. Hodgson and the, the Irishman didn't. <laughs> Hodgson won an FSG signing, was he? It was Hicks and Jurt signing. But I, I, look, I get it. I'm not disagreeing. I think though, though like, this might uh, this might cause massive arguments. And to be fair, I don't care because it's my own opinions. If people don't like it, don't like it. But I'd rather FSG as owners than some of the owners in this Premier League right now. I'm t- I'm just saying that right now. Clear Lake and Todd Bowley are terrible owners at Chelsea. Chelsea fans want them out, but they spend a billion quid on transfers. But they want them out because they're useless. Um, The Glazers, I'd rather have FSG over the Glazers every day of the week. You know, I don't care how they did it. You know, didn't use their own money, got loans, took it out of Liverpool, whatever not. They built a new training complex and they built Anfield up. The Glazers have completely ignored the stadium and their training complex. Remember when Ronaldo came back to Manchester United and complained about how bad the changing rooms and the training area still was and nothing had changed since 10 years ago when he left. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I, they're, they're good owners at a point, at a point behind the scenes, all that sort of stuff. They just got to get it a bit more right on the pitch. And that's where I agree with everyone else. That's where I agree with everyone else. They can get it a bit more correct on the pitch with what they do behind the scenes and how the club is stable and you put that together, then you've got something fantastic. And hopefully they're learning now. You know, they're, they're learning, I'm hoping. You know, but I don't think they're as... I, I don't think they're as all bad as everyone makes them out to be. And that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, they've done things wrong, done loads of things wrong. And when they've done things wrong, as everyone will know on this channel, I will call them out for it. I will call them out for it when they've done things wrong all the time. All the well, time. Well, they never invested, to... Jamie. Huh? They didn't invest. We had to yeah. sell to what, invest. What, what owners do invest? Well, well, I'll wrap now. I I always remember the Glaziers. Everyone was moaning, uh, you know, the Man United fans at the Glaziers. And do you ever remember when Pogba uh, uh, became available? Pogba. And he wanted 80 million for them. And he asked uh, the Glazers, they just paid it. Well, the Glazers didn't pay it. It came out of Man United's own money. Yeah, well, it it makes no difference. It came out. They got it. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say, Man United United have... See, this is the difference between Man United and Liverpool. People might not like to hear this. Man United are a bigger club in Liverpool at this moment in time, but money wise, you know, you know, that, as I said, through the nineties, Liverpool got left behind with the money of the Premier League, and Man United took over. Man United are up there around with for commercial revenue and world football, and they've had like 10, 20, 25 years of that commercial revenue in their football club. Liverpool have had their commercial revenue now for about five years. This is this is the difference. So they can spend that money. They're a self-sustaining football club. They don't Glazers don't put a penny in. FSG don't put a penny in. We're talking about Man City being owned. What remember, they're not putting all their money into the club because they're making up fake sponsorships. Um, fake places where investment comes from, they close businesses down and stuff like that. So it's not all coming out of their own pocket. You know, it, not Many Arsenal they got a loan two seasons ago. They got a big, big transfer loan two seasons ago to buy new players. If you look at the Nottingham Forest owner, he has spent his own money, yeah. But now they're going, they're getting done because they haven't used their money correctly. You know, you like, do, do you know Forest and Everton? Do you know how they stopped going into FFP? They put a hundred million of their own money into a separate bank account. They put their own money up, hundred million pounds of their own money, and put it in a separate bank account. And they tell the Premier League that money's there in case anything goes wrong. They're covered by FFP, but they don't do it because they don't want to use their own money. 
It is what I'm saying. It's just all you got Real Madrid who are owned by Spain for goodness, mm. by the Kingdom of Spain. So they've always got money. It's just they and I'm not gonna say Liverpool shouldn't invest more. They should. They should Liverpool should invest more. I agree with everyone. They should like Klopp got let down a few times on transfers. I'm not going to disagree with that at all. They, he did, and I've called him out for it. So I, when the Bellingham thing didn't happen, I called him out big over it. I went mad over him. You know, I said, you should back Jürgen because he's been loyal to you. You should be loyal to him. So I had to go at him then. And I just feel like the way football's going now as well, where it looks like you can't spend a £5 note without getting told off for it. <laughs> it's the way the way football's going now, especially in the Premier League, because the Premier League is scared of the government regulating their league. So that's why they're doing everyone now. Look at the January transfer window. How quiet was that? No one spent anything because everyone was scared no. to. No. And if we are going into a sustainable league, which is by the looks what we're going to go into, it's mad. We've actually got the right owners for it which is quite nuts. If we can't go into a sustainable league, we've got the right owners for it. So I don't know what the future holds though, but yeah, it's just, are they the best owners? No, they're not. They're not. They're not. And I agree with everyone. I just don't think they're the devil incarnate like a lot of people think they are. But that's just my personal belief. Yeah, no, no. no it's <clears throat> yeah, but, we yeah, all but they get our... people, uh, they, quickly, Frank, that um, you said that they're not the devil, but look, look at the people they let, be involved with Liverpool, LeBron James. He's proper into his rituals and stuff. Alton John, another guy. He was performing on the Anfield Road pitch. You know? Alton John, come on, man. And LeBron it's James is getting money taken out of the club as well. Who are these people be associated with Liverpool? And that's what I don't like FSG is because of the extra cash they want to make by using certain characters who I believe should not even be nowhere near Liverpool, let alone Anfield. You know, okay, I, I'll come on to that. I'll come on to that, JK. I Francine tried for a ticket, right? She tried for a ticket. And uh, I said, don't worry. I said, I'll get you a, a, a couple of tickets. So she said, all right, Dad. I inquired. I was going to uh, get her a, 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 a corporate one. Have a guess how much it was, Jamie? Have a guess. Please, just have a, have well, a little a guess. Ticket. A corporate yeah. ticket for a top Premier League club. Well, I'd say it's probably around, I don't know, a grand. Yes, spot on. One thousand and twenty pounds. It's the same for every top Premier League club. It's no different. But it's corporate. This is what it's about. Yeah, it's corporate, it's not about corporate, Man, corporate Man United. They're all the same. It's, it's corporate. Different. It's corporate. And that's what uh, uh, Roy Keane said years ago. And I'm talking about years ago. He said, what we've got now is the prawn, uh, the prawn sandwich. Yeah. It's the same and everywhere. I agree with you, Frank. But it's not just our football club. It's all the top clubs. It's all the top clubs. You know, they're not giving away these things for free. No, no. You know, but... <laughs> it's just, uh, it's not, the thing, this is what I, this is why I always argue with people. Uh, and, uh, it's not just Liverpool. It is all the top clubs that treat their fans like this. You know, United. Do you remember in the 90s when United used to bring out free kits every season? No one else used to do it. Yeah. No, no one used to do it. Everyone used to keep their home kit the same for two seasons in a row and then change the away kit every year, didn't they? Man United every season in the 90s made free kits. That's how they got ahead of the game. That's why their commercial revenue is higher than everyone else's right now because that's how they got ahead of the game. It, it, it's all the big clubs do it. All this commercial stuff and like, it's disgusting. A game of football should not cost this much money. It's barmy. It's absolutely barmy. It should not be allowed. I agree with that. But it's, it's just, not just Liverpool. It's Man United, Man City, Chelsea. It's all of them. It, it, it's just... Yeah, it's I hate them, it. Yeah. I yeah. hate that part of football. And I agree with everyone there. I hate that part of football. It's just greed. It's just well, greed. This, is why, this is why, Jamie, I, uh, I, I support all the small businesses for, uh, you know, mm. like this, what I've got on here. And that was when we went over to uh, Madrid to play Tottenham. Right? Yeah, I've got that here. I've got that because it was there. Yeah. Right? And it's a small business here in Liverpool by a man and wife. And the brilliant, lot cheaper than going into and getting a t shirt 
out of the shop. And it's like uh, the lovely Jean may have show her a little t-shirt again. And, uh, you know, she's a small, she's not even a small business. She's designed and she wants to make a lot more. And she said to me, she said, Frank, they'd be a lot cheaper. You live in London, uh, Jamie, and you know. She said, it'll be a lot cheaper to get them made up in Liverpool. And I said, yeah, no problem. Get up here and uh, find a place. So, you know, I, I, you do, Jamie. Mm. You, you su support uh, small businesses as well. Yeah. You know, if anyone lives yeah. around your way and has got their uh, merchandise, you know, especially Liverpool merchandise, you'd support. Oh, yeah, I always support small businesses. That's what everyone should do. But, you know, the mad thing is, if that T-shirt is no differently designed than other Liverpool merchandise, right? Yeah. But because it's got a, a Nike tick on it, yeah, it's it just look at just what, how much does a plain Nike T-shirt cost? Thirty-five quid, something like that, just for a night a plain Nike T-shirt. Then you put the Liverpool branding on it, hundred quid. Yeah, it, 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 no, it's you're just, right. it, 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 it's just it's not, you know, it, it's awful. You know, who's got like this? The England kit costing one hundred and twenty-five pounds, and they can't even get the flag right. It, it's mad. It, it's the world we live in. It's the commercial world we live in today. Unfortunately, we live in a commercial yeah. world where everything yeah. has got wealth. Everything's got a pound note attached to it, Every, and yeah. everyone now is trying to achieve or getting a pound note. You know, that's what everyone's goal is because it's a commercial world we live in now. You know, look how much yeah. look how much a loaf of bread is compared to what it was ten years ago. And pint of milk to what it was 10 years ago. All this sort of stuff, the cost of living and everything is just mad. It's and that's why the world we live in. Yeah. And football is the biggest sport in the world. If you've got the biggest sport in the world and you've got people that are willing to spend billions on it, they're going to want their investment back, ain't they? So shirts are going to cost you 150 quid. Tickets are going to cost you a grand. It, it's a, a mad world. But as I said, I it's just the world we live in right now, unfortunately. And what Liverpool got to do, as horrible as this sounds, they got to be part of that. Otherwise, they get left behind. I don't want Liverpool to be part of it. I'd rather be Liverpool be brought up on the foundations they used to be brought on, right? That's the way we want Liverpool Football Club to be brought up on, on the foundations that it started with Shankly and all the way through. But if Liverpool carry on like that, they're going to get left behind, it's, uh, and I don't like saying that, but we will because the commercial world we live in today, you know, everyone needs to be making something, unfortunately. And I hate the fact, I hate that about society. I hate that about football. It, it drives me mad. But unfortunately, that's the world we live in and we can't change that, unfortunately. Well, I'm, yeah, made, up the... I'm made up you said that, Jamie. I'll tell you for why. This, no one's seen me in these. No one. No one's ever seen me because I won't wear them. Right? Will, will not wear them. Because of your little tick there. Mm. I will not wear these things. Will not wear them. And they're brand new, by the way. They're all brand new. You know, there they are, look. All brand new. Will not wear them. Simply because they're all commercialised by the owners and Nike and LeBron James. Have you mm -hmm. seen LeBron James? Who is he? He's a mm -hmm. basketball player and he stands in there like this, big photograph outside the ground of him mm -hmm. and Virgil. And he's standing there with a basketball and he's got, you'll never walk alone on a T-shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 31 million quid he gets every year or 32 now, it's gone up. I'll That's tell you right now, right if, I, if I had LeBron James money, I would put a stake in FSG and get that same money. I ain't going to lie. It's the commercial world we live in. And yep. Le LeBron James is probably... LeBron James is probably the biggest sportsman in the world. So Not really. having, that, having, that, having that against your name is just... It, again, it's business. I agree with everybody. I do agree. I agree with Frank. I agree with all of you guys. I agree with everyone in the chat. But we don't. We live in a commercial world right now, and if you're not in, if you're not playing the game, you're out of the game. And as we remember, growing up in the nineties with the Premier League, Liverpool were out of the game because they got left behind because they kept to their 
morals that they were brought up with with Shankly. I like that. That's how I want football to be. Football for me should be self-sustainable through everywhere, through the top of the league to the grassroots. Everything should be sustainable. So if money goes into grassroots, that money in grassroots gets shifted about to everyone in grassroots, even amount for everybody, playing pitches, changing rooms, everyone gets kits, all this sort of stuff, training areas, good times to play, all this sort of stuff, floodlit grounds, floodlit grain parks, all this stuff. And then you go through the leagues to the biggest league. You know, the money goes up as you go up, but everyone gets a fair chunk of it. And you're self-sustained. Everyone's self-sustained. I believe that's how football should be, all right? in my opinion. And then everyone, then, then the littlest team can one day compete for a Premier League title because they're on an equal playing field eventually. But there's no equal playing field no more. We've got, we've got kings and queens of Saudi Arabia and Spain and all these sort of things owning football teams now. So... Luton Town have done amazing to get into the Premier League, but Luton Town will never be able to compete with Man City. And for me, that's not right. That's not football. You know, that, that's not football. And that, yes, you get to a certain level where you are going to be more wealthier, but you're using your wealth from a self-sustainable site. So eventually other clubs can get up and match you. But the way football is now and the way they've commercialised the Champions League now, the Europa League and the Conference League from next season, the way the, the match the six and a half billion quid the Premier League got in this season for next year, it's only making the rich richer. And teams like Luton and that will never be able to compete unless they go and get sugar daddy owners. And that's the only way you can do it now. And is that right? Is that how we want to see football? Not for me. But well, if we, we don't live in that world. Well, we as you know, Jamie. You don't want to mm. see it. I don't want to see it. We don't, all don't want to, you know, no. with these Arabs or whatever. We don't want to see that. No. But we want to play uh, a level playing field. Mm -hmm. Jamie, can That's I ask you a question? Do you know Manchester City? Now, you know that they, uh, you know, they, they cheated all the way, right, right through. What do you think should happen to them? Be honest. Manchester City? Yeah. Manchester Manchester City should get the harshest punishment. If they are found guilty, and I can't see how they're innocent of every single charge. I just can't see how they can be. So if they're found guilty, the head of UEFA has already said he knows Man City are guilty, but we couldn't. We it was our own fault because we didn't get the paperwork in time. If if UEFA got the paperwork in time, when City went to appeal to the sport of arbitration, they said the only reason City won. It's because UEFA messed up the paperwork. If UEFA never messed up the paperwork, you City would have been banned from Europe. So if they got banned from Europe, they would have been done from the Premier League. I think the Premier League have got to come down hard to Manchester City because if the Premier League don't come down hard to Manchester City, I think a lot of teams in this Premier League are going to pull away and make their own league. And I think it would be the littler teams. I think teams like Forest and Everton and stuff like that have been done for being like nine million pound or nineteen million pound over the threshold, like twenty million quid over the threshold, and you're being du deducted points and possible relegation because of it. But but Man City can do all this and get away with it. Then these teams have got every right for me to pull out of this league and create their own league somewhere else, Premier League Two or something, where it's a more fair playing field. And that's so for me. They got to come down to City hard, man. If they don't come down to City hard as well, Frank, my worry is that the government then get involved in our in our football, because we know the our, our government wants to regulate our league. They're desperate yeah. to. Yeah. And if if City get away with it, I've got a feeling our government would then regulate our league, and that is something no one wants. So. Yeah. They got to come down, man. They got to come down hard on them. Relegation, everything, man. Relegation, titles. That they were proved to be cheated with them titles. But whether it's happened, you know, there's been nothing done. Nothing has absolutely zilch has been done. So when well, this could go on for another 10 years because what they're doing behind the scenes, as everybody, well, I don't think everybody knows, but they've got the best lawyers in the world and they're fighting all this as, as the season goes on into the close season. They're still fighting it. That's why nothing's done. And it just keeps rolling and rolling and on. You know, and it's it's wrong. Yeah, too valuable um, for the Premier League, man. See, 
Um, you lose Man City, they lose a lot of the, the shine and the glitz from the Premier League. That's all that is. So they keep the rich people happy, you know. Get rid of, like Forest and Everton. They got they got done harsh, you know. Midway through a season as well, you know. Uh, Chelsea and Man City carrying on, but like Chelsea's expense that's that's that was just crazy, you know. And all of a sudden, like they're carrying on playing without getting any deductions. So you got to. It's like politics, you know. It's like the world we live in. What Jamie was saying earlier, that to keep up with the Joneses, we've got to sort of dabble in that type of world. You know, we've got to mix with these people, this, that, and the other. But I'm thinking Liverpool is built differently, hence why us guys here all support Liverpool. You know, it isn't because we're sugar daddies and we're like, we did it the Chelsea way or where the Man United did it, where the internet era was about and their fan base got really big. Liverpool is an original club and we did it the right way. And now sort of seeing these guys who have been at the club for a long time now, FSG, got their feet set in and they're finding every opportunity to make money using the Liverpool badge. You oh, know? I, agree. I agree. And that's what it is. you know. And the thing is, if they kept the manager happy by giving him every season £100 million to spend in the summer, okay, us fans wouldn't have moaned about FSG at all. We've had summers where we spent 30 quid, a fiver maybe even. And that's what it is. It, look, they're making more from us than we are making with them, you know. We've won one Premier League and one Champions League with Klopp. Why? Using too many players that should have been probably moved on and probably <laughs> not buying the right players at the right time for the right prices. And that's why we failed. And that's why for me, FSG, yeah, I agree. good owners to a level, I understand that, 100%. They've done sort of good things, but for me, they could have done much, much, much more. By helping, you know, old players and stuff like this, you know, the old players who played for Liverpool, help them out financially. Why not? They made 600 million last year, these guys. You know, give a bit back to the guys who made the club. I'll come in there. I'll come in there and I set the precedent for today. I set the precedent. I, I, I remember Jerry Byrne and he was being buried, the club never sent a representative. And there was lads there, and I was talking to a few of the lads, and I said, uh, you know, oh, do, do you still go to match? I said, yeah, well, yeah, I'm going, yeah, every week. I said, do you go? I said, I'd never see you there. And I was joking when I said, he said, yeah, he said, uh, I said, do you get your tickets? You must get free tickets. He said, no, we don't get free tickets. We do not get free tickets. These are ex-Liverpool stars. These are legends, proper legends. Not talking about Jason McAtee, that's some professional <laughs> legend. Not talking about him. I'm talking about the likes of Chris Lawley, St. John, St. John. I was talking about them. Willie Stevenson. I had nights out for them to get them a few bob, to get them a few bob. And then I filtered out to the club. It filtered out to the club. And the next was, uh, oh, they were getting free tickets. They were getting free tickets. And I was on LFC TV then. And St. John became a close friend. So did Barney Rubble. So did Jan Mulvey. And I gave them nights out. Chris Lawler was absolutely skint. Skint. Absolutely skint. And he had to go and... and, and, and Ask his mate to get him a ticket and pay for it. He never paid like his mate. He said, I'm skint. He used to go to get. Now he uh, goes in and meets the, uh, the, the thing. They just give them little jobs, uh, meet and greet. Meet and greet. You know, these are like Phil Neal, the most decorated footballer. Four European Cups. And look, look, look at him. Now he goes and meet and greet, and this is what I said, Jamie, about getting a, a you know a, a, a thing for me daughter and one thousand two hundred. Oh, you get a free program. You get a cup of tea, uh, the bar, which is um, I, I forget the name of the bar, uh, but you know you can pay by card. You don't get a free beer, but you can have tea and coffee all day long if you want. One thousand and twenty pounds, Jamie. Yeah, One thousand. I meet the player, you know, and a free program. She's met them anyway. With me, 
that's just a, that's just the way football is now, unfortunately, and I hate it. I, I, I hate it. It's the commercialism. As I said, I've got two bloody things. And it's not just our owners. It's every up. Uh, this is the one thing I see everyone in the chat. It's not just Liverpool's own. It's every damn owner of a top team in world football. This is what I don't get. People not getting the commercialised nation of football now. Is that it, it is because of certain teams around the world with sugar daddy owners and everyone has to match it. So once once someone does a 50 million pound transfer, and that's you know, that's like a few years ago looks as a world record transfer, then everyone has to start matching them transfers for players because then agents who are arguably the worst of the lot, you know, get their players go right, he can't go unless you match that transfer. You know, if he's worth that, then he's worth that. So you have to match transfers, and then we keep going and going and going and going. And now you 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 have to spend you can spend 40 million just to get an average footballer. Do you know how mad that is? Yeah. You now you're spending 40 million to get an average footballer. Where f- 10 years ago, 40 million was getting you a quality footballer, not no oh. more. <laughs> you gotta go in the 80s, 90s, 100, 120, 140. You know. There's got to be a period when we just turn around and go, look, this is mental. This is absolutely mental. I'm paying 70 million quid for a, for a, a good player. I want him in my team because I like him. But he's going to cost me 70 million quid. Do you know how balmy that is? It, 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 it's just mad. There's got to come to a time when we all stop. But that's just inflation. I've said it before. Look at normal life. Look how much going to the supermarket costs a family of five now. You're looking at 200 quid for a week shopping you know 10 years ago it'd be seven it'd be 50 but you've got to do it because you need to feed your children you know what i mean it's just it's just life now and I just I on what red Bird's comment says if city get away with a fine i'll be considering stopping watching football maybe just for a few months but if city get away with a fine i'm not sure i'll even tune in to see the new season kick off mate that's how bad I'll feel about it and how annoyed I'll be. I might no, I'll still watch it. I'll still watch it, Lee. I'm a, I'm a Liverpool you know. supporter. I, I don't support anybody else. I support my club. Mm, same and I have for me, millions of years. Hey, Jamie. Same here, but Liverpool. You send you know. me your, listen, hang on, Lee. If you send me your address, I'll send those things down to you. They'll fit you if you want. And you'd wear them, wouldn't you? They won't fit my lovely broad shoulders, Frank. No. I'm so, hey, <laughs> you big. Do you want to see mine? I've got muscles all over the place. Look at me, then. Look at me. Fucking don't <laughs> hate that. Don't hate that. Incredible look. There's the incredible look. <laughs> That's it. But I'll like tell you what I like about our club this season. One thing I've liked about our club the last couple of years is that we are using the youth team as they should be used. That's what I absolutely love. So the last few years, we've put money into our youth team. Um, Ian, Alex, in the full who's the youth team overseer. What they've done over in that in the last few years is fantastic because now we're seeing players. And this, for me, how it should be done in football. You know, these young kids that have come to our club, to our academy, they don't have to be born and bred scousers. They can come over at eight or nine or ten years of age. And they, they, but they see a path now into the first team, and that's the way it should be done as well. Look, Connor Brad, how many times we've said it? How much money is Connor Bradley going to save us? Yeah. How much money is Kwanzaa going to save us? Yeah, it is. Dan's yeah. has got a massive future ahead of him in a few years' time, yeah. and that yeah. I, I love the fact as well that is the saving grace of our football club that we have actually got these academy kids coming through and are proper decent footballers. Bobby Clark's a decent little player, you know. He's got a bright future. You know, and that's good. I don't like youth. You know, some people, you if you look at Chelsea, say, they basically hoard out their academy. That's what they did. They just sold their whole academy off so they can off-balance the transfers that Roman was spending. That's how they got away with it all that time. Roman would spend all the money out of his own pocket and then he would whore off all the youth team around the country with loans and transfers to get back the money he has spent. So because it weren't classed as sell to buy, because it weren't classed as sell to buy because it was youth team players. But if you actually look at the Chelsea books under Roman, it was sell to buy in the same way because he got rid of the whole youth team 
put all them out on loans and transfers to surpass the uh, so plus his transfers that he paid out. So he evened it up. But it weren't classed as that because it was youth team. They don't class sell to buy as youth team. If you look at Man City last season, Man City sold three youth team players. The season four that they sold a youth team player. And they made like 70 million pounds in youth team sales in the last two seasons. You know, and so that's what teams are start, starting to do now. But Liverpool are bringing their youth team through. And that's the way I used to like it, man. That's the way your Fowlers came through, your McManimans came through, your Owens came through in the day. You know, um, your Stevie G's, obviously. You know, and going players. back, going back to my day, the likes mm. of Jerry Byrne, Chris yeah, Law, right. Tommy Billy Smith, Liddell. Ian Ka- Ka- Billy Liddell, Ka- all these players, Ka- you know, they Ka- came Ka- through. Little they, yeah. That's that's the way it should be done. That's the way it should be done. Before my day, there, Jamie, don't be told Billy Little in my day. <laughs> Liddlepool for a while, didn't they? Liddlepool, yeah, that's it. And it's still known to it today, you know, but mm. um, well, it's not, not as much like, but <coughs> would you agree with this? The little supermarket, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Ian McHale says, would you agree with this? Personally and charisma, personality, I'm sorry, personality and charisma is a big thing for the next Liverpool manager. It's the single most important position in this city, and you've got to carry the city with you. Gutted if it's not Jabby. Yeah, that's that's why the, the new guy, it has to be the right guy, personality wise. He has yeah. to have a big personality. He's going to look after Liverpool like a family. What Klopp has yeah. done, yeah, this is what I, 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 I'm with the t- topic about FSG and Klopp. Klopp has looked after the club, not just the players, the actual club and the city, while FSG yeah. don't even attend games. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. You understand my point there? It, they I don't attend games. Yeah. They just come, collect the money, and away you go, you know. So what Klopp has done is being more than what the average Joe can do. Him and Pepper are probably the best at it. So the next guy that's coming in has to have that same personality. But as this guys know here, we're old school. These there's not a lot of good managers out there with that personality, mm-hmm. and that's why it's going to be difficult to find the next guy who's going to be able to handle a club bigger than us. I mean, we don't know. Almiron might be that man. I mean, because we don't. Not a lot of people don't watch Portuguese football. They're not quite. You know, it's probably a bit more. We're not quite sure, but we don't know. Amaran could come into this football club, big smile on his face, and be excellent. No, we don't know. We, we honestly don't know. I can understand why a lot of Liverpool fans don't want Deserby. And my thing on Deserby, I like him as a coach, but personality wise, he don't he don't work at our football club. I can see Deserby at Man City, personally. But at Liverpool, Deserby's personality he hasn't really got one. But as a as a coach, he's a fine coach. But I get you. I get you. You do need some clubs. Just need that, don't they? Some clubs just need that. Just some imagine, clubs, you know, Jamie. Yeah. Just imagine, you know, in a few years' time, because as you know, Pep's going to leave uh, City. Yeah. People will be talking about Klopp and uh, Pep for years to come, because I've never known two managers to hold football in the palm of their hands. No yeah. other manager. Yeah, them two will be the greats of Premier League. There's no doubt about it. But it's the same, Pep's going to go soon. And then it's going to be maybe your Almirons and your Artetas, you know, in the Premier League. And we're going to look at it. I think we look at it now because you've got Pep still there. But if I look at all the other managers in the league right now, Chelsea, I Chelsea go, uh, what, you know, I don't know what Chelsea go. They've got Poch and... The way they run is just terrible. Uh, Man United might get their acts together. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I just I, I I get what everyone's saying about Alonso. I do, I do. But we don't know that Almerin won't come in and just you know, Klopp never had an, a thingy with Liverpool, any ties with Liverpool before we signed him. You know, his ties were with Mainz. That's Klopp's ties. That's Klopp's, Mainz and Stuttgart. Because if you listen to Klopp, he's a Stuttgart fan growing up as a kid, yeah, coming from the Black Forest. And he Mainz was his team his whole career. 
So his influence, he, he, he brought his to them back then when he was a manager, you know. So he came to Liverpool when he was just this massive figure when he came to Liverpool and took the club over and he is what he is now. We love him. So we don't know Almerin couldn't be like that. You know, he has no affinity with us. Like Klopp never had any affinity with us. But he might come to the club and be like, who knows? He could be like a Klopp. We don't know. We we just don't know. You know, who would have known Klopp when he was at Mainz? Yeah. You know, would have been the manager he is today. We don't know that of Almering. Because Almering's 39 as well, like Klopp was when he took over at Mainz. A young man in the job. And then went Ex- off to the same so we don't know that could be happen with with uh, with Ruben Almerin. We just we just don't know. We just don't know. And I, I, I'm saying I, I think it's quite. I'm quite excited and nervous at the same time for the future. But it's it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very interesting and a, and a ride. That's for sure, no doubt. Well, the yeah, lads is a cracker for the uh, Anfield Raw. And he says, uh, what would the panel, question for the panel, what would be a good budget in the summer? And what do you, as outgoings, and will this be telling in spending whether Klopp was right or just frugal? Mm. Mm-hmm. Like know, you, got, you got Klopp, um, you got Salah, you got Trent, and you got Virgil one year left. You, Matip, Thiago will go, maybe Adrian as well, so they're going to save money on the wages there. If they sell Salah, that will pay for the next guy coming in. And that's a classic FSG move if that happens. For, like, for us guys, Salah can play for another two years minimum at Liverpool. Virgil as well. Virgil's given the captain armband last se- uh, at the start of the season. So for me, that contract should have been on the table then. When, contra- when Virgil got the armband, him and Trent, their contract should have been sorted then, in my opinion. But I can just imagine... If Salah leaves, they're going to use them funds to give it to the next guy. And one thing I will say, I know people don't like the whole funds thing, right? The whole sell to buy stuff. But the one thing I will say, when we sell players, they get all the money to use to buy it and use that money to buy players. I'm not saying it's a good thing or if anyone gets on at me, but there's a lot of ownerships. You know, I remember when Ronaldo, Man United sold Ronaldo, and they gave they gave the next manager, what is it? They gave Ferguson like nowhere near the money. He went and bought that geezer that's now at Southampton as a, as a winger, didn't they? And that was the only transfer they brought in. He went and had to use all the money. I remember the big arguments at the time. So I don't like us selling our best players. I'm not sitting here saying that. But if they sold Salah in the summer for 100 million quid, I know for a fact the the new manager would get all that 100 million quid to spend i'm not saying that's a great thing because of all this but i'm just saying like there's a lot of owners out there that if they sell you know the manager don't always have that money to spend so but i don't think salah I, I i personally think all three of them will sign new deals anyway so i think that'd be fine it's pivotal that they do go jamie it really is yes. I, I don't see him going anywhere i don't I, I don't see where virgil goes and i don't see where trent goes i, I, I really don't salah I don't think Salah wants to go to Saudi Arabia like a lot of people think either. He's watching it over there. Jordan Henderson's left. You know, other people are leaving. You're telling me Jordan Henderson and Salah ain't had any phone calls or messages why he left and what it's like over there and things like that. You know, so I, I just feel like they're all signed new deals. And if they all sign new deals and we get some rid of some of the deadwood in our team, which you've got to do, it's very important. I think people forget this. It, it's as important as selling players as it is buying players. That's really important because you don't want to keep a lot of dead wood in your team. And then eventually you can't get rid of them. So you've got to look at players. You've got to look at their ages, what they've done for your football club. Have they got anything left? Have they got anything to prove? Have they got anything left in their legs? You look at all that. And if you get good deals for these players and you think like you can buy players in that replace them that are a better age, a better fitness level, got better technique, better player upgrade than what you've got, then do the then do the deals, you know. But I don't think we need too much. I honestly don't think we do we need that much. You know, Sabozla is gonna be better next season. Graham Birch should be better next season. McAllister's gonna be even better next season. You know, they're new players that are just cementing themselves. If Salah stays he's Salah, he's gonna just be Salah again. Jotter will be Jotter. Darwin's going Darwin's only getting better. 
Luis Diaz, he'd just be Luis Diaz. Virgil will be Virgil. Allison will be Allison. I don't think we need much. I think we need about, I say, three or four players in in the summer and about three or four players out to even it off. That's yeah, great. I agree with that. Yeah, we don't need an awful lot. We've got a great squad now. Just need a little little bit of tinkering, a little bit of adjustments, and we're good to go for the new season, whoever's in charge. Yeah, he's got to go there because his little lads are taken ill. Zanel's got to go. Okay, yeah. Zanel. Speak to you later, mate. Yeah. Yeah. See you after yeah. me. Yeah, bro. The little yeah. fella's all right, mate. JK, can you get um, K-Mac on? Yeah, right. no problem. I've got to run yeah. son. I've got to run as well. I just wanted to jump in and have a conversation with you guys. So I've got to, I've got to jump have in. Have you got to go? Yeah, I've already I've got something planned at half 10 anyway. So <laughs> oh, what do you like? I'm going to send me your, um, send me your their things. I'll send oh, you I'm, doing, things. I'm doing some UFC stuff now. I'm doing some UFC. Oh, you was, you? Yeah, UFC. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, yeah, my yeah. grandson's in that, you know. Is he? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see this guy, I don't know. You'll have to message me because I love UFC. Yeah, so I've got some UFC videos to do now, so I've got to jump off and do that. Do us a favour. Love, love Jamie, you, Jamie, Jamie, do us a favour. Send me your address, please. I'll All send right. you these down because they, they will fit you, honestly. Okay? All right. All right. I'll wear them with pride. I'll wear them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, you guys. See you soon. See you later, Jamie. Thank and you. happy Easter for all of you, by the way. Happy Easter. Good, mate. Good to see you, mate. That's how Jamie got. Where's k -Mac? Is k -Mac with us? Not yet. Oh, not yet. He'll be here in a minute. Okay. Unless he's gone with uh, Jamie, if you know what I mean. But did you hear what he said? And I keep telling people. I keep telling people. Now listen. Look. Just listen to what he says. Keep telling people this. Right? Big up, everyone. Please don't believe the Alonso up, up, uh, updates. It's just brilliant media work by LFC. Remember when I said to Jamie, is this a smokescreen? He's accepted a three-year contract. Believe that. This is what I keep... Do me a favour, people out there, will you try and, uh, just, well, not try, but just hit the like button for me. Get the algorithm out there because, you know, we try to answer everybody. We really try to answer everybody, discuss their particular um, comments. You know, if they throw a comment or... And that's yeah, keep it real, says, you know, okay, I get on the panel. But where, has he gone? JK. Yeah. Was Has he gone? Who uh Jamie? No, has he gone with uh, Jamie? Has he? With the, <sighs> uh, I don't like all that uh, that boxing stuff. <sighs> Groundsome's one of them. <laughs> there he is. There he is. There he is. When he gets on. Look, he's fixing the lights like here. Um, <laughs> How are we all doing? Oh, bro, we can't see you yet. Oh, okay. It'll come on in a sec. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know. Should have heard it, it before, K Mac. Oh, blimey. Is it on? Not yet, K. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Cool. Now you're clear, clear everything. So, listen, K Mac. Right, everyone went on meltdown. Jamie came on and said uh, he's not coming here. But there was one little caveat, uh, which was brilliant, actually. One of the lads, I think it was Ian McKay, I'm not quite too sure. And he went, and the, the language, you've got to look at the language. And it said, you know, supposedly, if you know what I mean, it, it, allegedly, whatever, that he's not coming here. He's not coming here. And this is what you've got to uh, take notice of. It's the language. It's the language. 
you know, it, 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 it never said he's never, definitely not coming here and he's going to sign a contract with Leverkusen or whatever. And then it just went on to meltdown. But he is coming here. I know that for the fact. It's um, if if you read if you actually read it, read the tea leaves and you look at some of the some of the actual um, some of the writing that's in the papers. It's old news. It's it's old news. It's it's stuff that it's stuff that was talked about months ago. It's nothing new. It's basically it's basically regurgitating the fact that Leverkusen are confident that he's staying. Like, that's what they keep on saying. That was that was talked about months ago when they had yeah, an interview. He did. He did. Yeah, when they had so, an interview yeah. with their owner, and their owner was like, "I'm really confident he's going to stay another another year to the end of his contract." Well, of course, Alonso's going to say he's going to stay till the end of his contract. Like, of course, <laughs> he's not going to turn around and say, "Oh, I'm buggering off to Liverpool now," <laughs> yeah. when he's still got two trophies on the on the table. Like, it's just well, that's it, what I said. K Mac, honestly, is what I said, and I said it a couple of weeks ago as well. If Jürgen Klopp says he's going to uh, Barcelona from here, the end of the season, I would tell him to piss off now. Yeah, to no. say, oh, well, yeah, we're going out to that. You, and you that's don't what they're you, 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 you Exactly. You yeah. don't. You don't want to. You don't want to let your fans know that that your mind that your mind might be somewhere else in the future. Like you've got to, you've got to stay stay at the job the whole time. Just look at Mane, just for example. Yeah. Like we all we all knew Mane was leaving, yeah. Like he wanted to leave. We all turned against him, like, and he had a really good he had a really good last six months of his of his career and put and put two trophies on the table for us pretty much. But the fans still hated him. Because they knew he was he was bugger enough to buy Munich. He wanted a new challenge. Like uh, fans are fickle, and and if Alonso, if anything comes out that Alonso's going, uh, going, like, and he's already he's already like signed a new signed a contract, and and he's actually said something, like it, it'll just go, it'll just backfire on him. So it's just it's just really good management of the whole situation by Liverpool. You know, you just have to look at Jurgen Klopp as well. The, the example with Jürgen Klopp, like, like it came out that that he that he said he wanted to leave back in November, and and nobody knew about that. Like that was literally, I think it was like six people in the actual in FSG knew about it, um, and two of them probably would have been Henry and his wife. So you got a really limited amount of people that knew that Jürgen was leaving, and then it came out that it was it was actually the summer. So it was like. A couple of months before that, we're really good at keeping keeping our dirty laundry out out the um, out the media. And if anyone believes David Joyce, uh, Paul Joyce, sorry, no, like Paul Joyce that, is David. not in the loop anymore. No, He's not in the loop anymore. No, um, you you more you you should should be listening to David Lynch more than anyone. David else. Lynch is brilliant. And Ornstein. Ornstein, Ornstein gets like the major, the major stories. So Ornstein's not said it. Ornstein's not said it. No, neither is David Ornstein's, Lynch. Ornstein's the guy that told us about the Caicedo um, yeah. bid. Ornstein's the guy that told us about Klopp leaving. You know, yeah. Ornstein's the guy who told us about FSG selling, looking to sell. Like, yeah. he's the guy. Like. That was a but, yeah. that, that he says he was selling. That was a, but, I, I even, that. but even even if he doesn't come, like for whatever reason, our second choice is a brilliant manager. Like Amaron is a brilliant manager. Like so, we don't get that one. We get another one who's who's just as good, honestly. Um, but he's not an ex Liverpool. That's all. Exactly. We're exactly. all in that guessing season, Frank. You know, everyone's saying this, that, the other. I'm saying we've got a league title to win, guards. You know, I'll it's tell you like, what. As long, as long as they're not, as long as they're not bloody talking about talking about referees doing us over, I'm fine. Because mm. I can't be asked listening to that now. Can't yeah, be asked. Good. Can't yeah. be asked them all saying, "Oh, they got the, they got the, they got the decisions right." Like, you know, I can't be bothered with that crap now. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. So look at we've got that to deal with. We've got a new manager to come in to deal with. And on top of that, we've got Europa League to deal with as well, plus the Premier League. And for me, the only things we've got to worry about is what who we're gonna play, who's fit for Sunday. You know, this new manager topic is a bit of a distraction, but uh what we don't really need. I think the I players that I was focused on this season. And yep. it's not that I, I'm not thinking about the new manager. It's just I'll be thinking about it a lot more when the season's over and the business is done one way or the other. It's not that I don't think about the new manager. Yes, I do. But it's on the back shelf a bit, like, compared mm-hmm. to the season that's already in, in play. I want to see what happens this season before I start thinking a lot about the new manager. Well, what, I've got to get, I've got to get I've got to give K Mac his due here because K Mac, I, t- I think it was last week, or I don't know when it was, I, I don't know when it was weeks ago. And and he said uh, all the rumours have become an out about. And when Xabi Alonso was mentioned and became favourite, and uh, I remember you saying K Mac uh, about, I don't know whether it was on this show or I don't know whether it was on Jamie's because uh, I just watched Jamie's and, uh, you know, Alex. Uh, Alex De Gea, he, he, he's uh, he's show Gilday, I'm sorry, and um, you said you said take no notice of the rumours, do not take any because there'll be smoke screens, yeah. and this is what we're doing now. This is what it's all about now, especially when Amaran was mentioned. I didn't, I don't even know Amaran. I have a clue who he is. And then all of a sudden, his name gets mentioned. And because he's got a foreign sound and name, oh, we want him. <laughs> yeah, oh, this amateur of is great. And this is what it's all about. You're getting fans. And uh, I, I, last night on Jamie, you wasn't on Jamie's show last night, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was. Would you? Yeah. When it was coming on, it, oh, yeah, you were. I'm sorry, k uh, you, you need to get on there, by the way, mate. I, I can't get on. Every time he sends me a bloody, and even you I can't get on. I can get on there the twelfth man's. I can get on there the uh, fuzzies, but every time, it's yeah, a But I remember you saying about honestly, and this is very, uh, this, this, this is pivotal to everything. To be honest, because you said, don't be taking any notice. Oh. Uh, the rumours that are going around at Liverpool, you know, no one's interested. Or, you know, managers are not interested, especially about Xabi Alonso. That's what you said, and that's where I've got to give you credit. I, and, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this, some of this that's come out, is as all came from the Bayern Munich side. I wouldn't be surprised, just to kind of. And Real. Yeah, yeah. Just to and just Real. to kind of derail it a bit for you know make their fans think that there's still hope that yeah. that he's coming their way but um yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't really think about it too much well as herbert long's brother says notice what it says unlikely to join liverpool it doesn't say it's off and it doesn't because that's what they have to do isn't it they, they, they can't just say it's off or their journalism's fucked anyway sorry to uh, <laughs> use the expletive any anything to do with Liverpool gets gets clicks now. Like just gets clicks. Like so all the time. All yeah, the time. And, and 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 it's not it's not just it's not just Liverpool that are looking at news on Alonso, are they? You've got Germans and you've got Spanish as well, so you've got treble the clicks. Um and I, the I, Germans, I missed, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I missed I missed a lot of these, isn't there? Yeah. I missed a lot of the yeah. show, guys. I was I was playing um I was playing Harry Potter on the Xbox with the wife. <laughs> oh, well, come on. <laughs> no media wise, there's a lot of interested parties, isn't there? In the Alonso thing, you know, um, the Spanish journalists are interested, the German journalists, uh, journalists from countries that aren't even involved in it are interested. So um, yeah, there's a lot of clickbait, isn't there? There on this story. Mm-hmm. This is what it's all about, clickbait. Unfortunately, about clickbait. can you clickbait. can you can you imagine if Alonso would have been at the Legends game? <laughs> 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 he was at the one. He was at the one the year before. 
Yeah, yes, yes. Can you imagine if he was at the Legends game? Everything would have been like, yeah, he's definitely coming. Like, yeah. Yeah, he was having no, secret talks. <laughs> I think he was a kidnapped him. I wonder, if, I, wonder if, I wonder if by Labour Coups were like, yeah, you're not going to that, mate. <laughs> no, but we're no, going to no, no, Yeah. And uh, more to the uh, the Alonso now that meets the eye. There's more to the Alonso that meets the eye. Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. And again, it all smokes smoke screens and everything else. Al- and Alonso's are, also like uh, winning uh, the treble in his first yeah. season. <laughs> And as Herbert Long's brother says, and he's spot on there, it's probably Alonso's dream job. He won't get another chance if he says no. And I said that before when uh, Jamie was on. Then yeah, Jamie that, was on. That, that's what I agree as well. It's like, is with Liverpool, it doesn't, the job doesn't come along that often. We're not like a Chelsea where we swap managers every year or two. We normally, I think we've had like less than 20 managers in our in our history, which is incredible because I think Chelsea have had 20 managers since I started watching, since I started watching Premier League. You know what I mean? I think, I think Wolves and Bournemouth have had 20 managers in about five years. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, we're, we're a club that, that gives, gives managers time and and if they and if they're performing well, we'll give them new contracts and we want them to stick around. So if we do get a manager that isn't Alonso, how does Alonso get back in? Because exactly. he's gonna go to Bayern or he's gonna go to Real, but Real. then he could go from Bayern to Real or Real to Bayern and the Liverpool job might not be available. Like you know, this is the timing. The timing is perfect for him to, for him to like win a treble at, or win, hopefully not a treble, because that means he wins the Europa League. <laughs> win a double. <laughs> win, a, win, a, win a league. Yeah, win a league and a cup at, in um, in Germany, and then just move over to to Liverpool, and then do five five ten years whatever at Liverpool with a young board as well, with a young director of football and the young COO. Who were, you know, around the same age. Um, I just think it's. I just think it just it fits. It's a perfect timing, and he might not get another chance. Just might not get another chance. Like that's it, and that's what he has to think about. But I, but I've heard that he's agreed a three-year contract. Like, and he's also he's also getting two major players that he wants, um, as well as part of as part of the deal. One of them's one of them's Musiala, um, and one of them's Taposa that he's taken with him from the club. But we, but we also he also knows about a a, a special release in Verts's contract that no one knows about. This this is just what I've heard off a couple of people. Like, but yeah. You see, we loved uh, Sadio. We were sorry to see him go. You know. And uh, did, did it, you know uh, that Melissa Reddy he used to go out with Melissa Reddy? That was a that was, he was, yeah, he was dating her for a while. Go away. Yeah. I heard that, but I didn't know if it was true. Like, I, I heard it, yeah. didn't know if it was that was his girlfriend, that was his girlfriend for a bit. Okay, go away, yeah. And yeah, you know, uh, that's why uh, the Anfield Raw hates guy. I, I don't watch it's Sky. Sky. I don't I've watch Sky. never liked Sky. I've never liked Sky, but I hate them a lot more now. Well, is it, why, is it, why I don't watch them, and I don't, honestly, uh, Sky, Sky News, Sky Anything, is because of uh, Rupert Murdoch and the Sun. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why, I honestly, I do. Murdoch sold Sky news. a long time ago, Frank. No, Sky no, that's to... why I don't bother with them anyway. Hmm. It's still the same boat. Yeah, yeah, it's still the same boat. Slice like sports. Same, talk, same with talk sport. Same with talk it's sport. Called Comcast. Sport. Fuck. It's called Comcast. They want to the guy now. They're Americans. 
But that ready woman, she was at Liverpool to get a step up into the world of football, you know, and all of a sudden she's at Carrington fucking training ground every fucking day, you know? She was like a <laughs> Liverpool fan at Carrington every day. What's that all about? You know? Okay. That's the sort of people the owners allow in the club. Her, LeBron, like, come on, man. We've got, look at you, Frank. You're a lifelong Liverpool fan. You know, mm. you, George. George played for Liverpool. Where's his uh, phone call? Say, you know what? Come round. Be part of the club. You know? And that's why I'm saying these guys are the wrong owners for us. It's football in general. It ain't just our owners. It's every club. Man United, Chelsea, Tottenham, whoever. They just want to treat the fans as customers, 100%. You know? At the end of the day, it's all about the football, you know? We, we guys just love... They've even messed that up as well, Frank, with VAR. The first three seconds when a goal goes in, that's the, that's the reason you go to games. They've even messed that up. And I've been saying yeah. for about a good 15 years, they've ruined the music industry, they've, mu they've ruined the football industry. Football is next on the agenda. And here yeah, we are. Films, they've been ruined yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> they've fucked wow, up everything. Well, dark. some films. You know, you're the type of person that only watches mainstream films. You're a retard anyway, like so. But, um, yeah, they have messed up mainstream films and made them unpalatable. But, um, thankfully, I mean, there's other kinds of films being made. I mean, have you, have, has anyone watched Three Body Problem yet? No. <laughs> Uh, right. Yeah, that that that's pretty much that that that's pretty much a sneak preview of what's coming in the next hundred years. <laughs> Free what's body it? problem. What's it called? <laughs> Free body problem. Free body problem. Yeah. Free body. Yeah. Problem. Free body problem. It's basically okay. about. Um, it's basically about um, the Maidong revolution. Um, somebody started working on a secret program in trying to communicate with with an alien race in china and because there was so much horrible death and war going on in china um when the alien race contacted her they basically said do not reply to this unless you want your earth conquered unless you want your will conquered because we're coming we're coming to take over your your planet uh because our planet is dying and she replied back, come and save us all because we need saving. <laughs> and then and then and then thirty thirty years later, they're on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds amusing this. Like the sound it, of it. And and the and the aliens are um are coming from a planet which is behind the sun. So they're orbit. And the and the way they arrive is from behind the sun, so you can't see them. Oh. And you've heard about you've heard about the planet Naboru. Um, if you haven't heard about the planet Naboru, you should definitely definitely Google it, because everyone's talking about um, that's that's the planet which is where we came from, which is where our ancestors came from. And the Egyptians talk about it. The Egyptians have got hieroglyphics about it. Um, everything that, that talks about like worshipping the sun is because this planet is behind the sun. And that's the orbit. And it's a 16,000 year orbit that goes around the sun. And it's coming back in the next, uh, things like 200 years, maybe. Um, but this, this TV show, is unbelievable. This is really <laughs> unbelievable. This. I like the sounds of this, Kate. It's eight eight episodes. It's on Netflix. It's the biggest thing on Netflix right now. I watched yeah. it. I watched it on. Um, I watched it last Saturday. Uh, no, I watched it. When, when did we watch that, babe? Was it during a weekday? Yeah, I watched it during a weekday. Actually, I stayed up till like three. I watched that because that's all of that. You know, any anything I go through the day and I watch them all. It's you know, the, the full uh, episodes. I only like them uh, mini series. Yeah. The I haven't, I haven't, I haven't spoiled it by, by. No, about no, of course. I haven't, I haven't. 
No, that hasn't spoiled for me. You at find all. out most of that. You find out most of that. That's got me interested rather than spoiling yeah. it. That's made me interested. You in find you find out most of that just in the trailer. Okay, so I haven't really spoiled it, but it's but it's incredible. <laughs> like it 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 fucks with your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and it's made by the people that um that made Game of Thrones, by the way. You should have uh, come on me uh, t- the the film on TV review this morning because we, we talk about things like that. Then all of a sudden I went to football and, oh, it's, it's and I was like five hours later. Like yeah, we basically mainly talked about football, didn't we, this morning on the film? T- well, not we did talk about films and TV, but there was a yeah. lot of football on it this morning. Yeah, because right. someone said football for a week, had we? Someone mentions about uh, footy, you know, the Brighton game or something like that, then it just kicked off on that. But Steve Evans, you know, a good friend of mine, he says, FSG, st- I'll, I'll tell you about this, uh, Kima. FSG charges you 1,020 1, per ticket per Anfield's hospitality seats. It's there, it's there on the website. Effing wrong and them yanks. Thing is, uh, I was saying to um, Jamie and the lads before, uh, our Francine couldn't get a ticket. And I said, um, I said, I'll get you the hospitality. I said, don't worry. And when I inquired, that's how much it was. I said that, be, you know, ages ago, £1,020 for a, a program. A program, free program you get. You know, it's a complimentary program. Uh, a cup of tea, as much tea or coffee all day if you want, and uh, that's it basically. Oh, oh, and there's the bar, the Brody Bar, it's called the Brody Bar, the fellow who invented the uh, gold net. And um, yeah, you, I've you been, can only I've, use, I've, you can, I've no, no free beer, no free beer, no, no draft, he says, only bottles, and uh, but only use your card, tea and <laughs> coffee. Tea and bloody coffee. What for over the ground? Yep. Um yep. I mean I mean it's it's Jürgen Klopp rates at the moment, isn't it? Because he's going so you know it, can I just um can, can I just can I just touch on a couple of things like because because I was gonna do a show tonight but but I ended up not bothering. But um but I've been looking into um I've been looking into a lot of our players um this season and i'm a little bit concerned that that we're going to have a we're going to have a knock-on effect from from the amount of usage of our players this season into next season and and there's not going to be anyone to blame because the manager's fucking off and I feel like he's doing the same thing. I mean, he, he's been fantastic, okay, this season. Like, I'm not, I'm not slagging him off, right? But I feel like he's doing the same thing that he did when he was leaving last time, and he didn't, and he didn't buy anyone. And then we got to a stage where we had loads of players that were young and loads of players that were old, and we had no in between. So all of our players got old, and all the legs went, and then we had two, we had a season where. We basically got into the top four by the skin of our teeth through an alley goal. <laughs> Who our goalkeeper yeah. scoring the winner? Long, yeah. yeah, and and then we had a massive drop off and had the worst the worst season we've had under under Jurgen, where we lost all our midfielders and yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm 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 looking at I'm looking at um I'm looking at a couple of players for example. So so what I want to just explain is. No player should ever have more than a 30% increase in their playing time from a year to a year, if that makes sense. Okay. So I just want to stipulate that part of it. So if you get a player that's played a certain amount of games, like last year, the next year, you shouldn't play 50 or 70% more. You just shouldn't. It should only be a 30% increase because you're you're putting too much pressure on the body for the next year, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. And yeah. I'm just going to name a few players because this is quite scary, by the way. I've looked into this now. This is quite scary. So I'm just going to rattle off. I've, I've got a page. If you don't mind me taking a couple of minutes, I think no, it's really, on. I think no, it's really no. informative no. for people here. And also, to the people out yeah. there, before you start, please press the like button, please. Yeah, and the like. subscribe if you haven't. Just press the like button, please. And if you're tuning in from my down. channel, and if you're tuning in from my channel, please switch over to Frank's and, and follow him, and also um, hit the likes as well. Um, so, so I just. I just want to rattle off a few a, a few things, um, and I, I can also do a little bit on the Brighton game as well, if that's all right. Um, so, Robbo's missed 21 games this season, by the way, just in case you didn't know, through that injury. Okay, 21 games, um, and now he's out again for another four weeks. Okay, because he's got a yeah, lower ankle, a lower ankle injury. Luckily, it's, it's not a high ankle. Luckily, it's not a high ankle injury, which is what Curtis Jones got. This is a lower one, but it'll be about four weeks, just just to let you know. Um, I want to talk about uh, Dom. So everybody's talking about Dom being brilliant when he started, went into a lull, and then started picking up again. Okay? Dom's, Dom's just played 192 minutes for Hungary in pointless games. Okay? He's played 577 minutes for Hungary this year. Uh, sorry, this 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 um, season. 577 minutes just for his international team. Okay, I just want I just want to let people know that that I know we want these brilliant players, these young brilliant players who play for international teams, but they're going to play every single international game because they are the stars, okay? And mm. it's the same with McAllister. It's the same with um, uh, uh, Dominic Zabolsai, Nunes, Jota, Diaz, Costas, Gapco. They're all players that will always get picked for their international teams and they will play all of the time for them, okay? We have to always put that into consideration. Dom shouldn't play more than 2,800 minutes a year because that would be 150 percent of his limit that he's played in his career so far because he's only 23 okay he's now on 2877 minutes and we've still got 11 uh, we've still got 12 games left so dom's redlined straight away all right and that's the reason why dom went into a lull because young players, when they get maxed out in, in a short space of time, you can't keep it up. You can't keep that level of consistency all the way through the season. That's why Elliot started slow and then went into went into some mad form and he dropped off. Jones did the same. Dom's done the same. Max done the same. All our players have done this. They've gone really high, had a lull. And then come back into it again because they can't keep that pace up because they're all being overplayed massively. Nunes, he's on 110% of his career average so far this season. So he's being overplayed massively as well. Even though we don't think he has, he has compared to what he's played before. Also, Dom scored 11 goals for Hungary this season, by the way. This is just for Hungary. <laughs> 11 goals this guy's going to be insane under the next manager insane because he's going to be in a more more advanced position and he's not going to be playing the hendo role um keller keller's done 165 percent of his career average now so keller is being massively over i know he's a goalkeeper but he's played so much more football than he's ever played before mm. so we also have to put that into it into um, perspective as well um, our reserve players, on average, have played over 2,000 minutes each. That's more than they've ever played before. Quance has done 2,100 minutes this season for us. He smashed his average by 50% as well. So you don't know what the knock-on effect is going to be next season for him. 
because he's being overplayed. Bradley, Bradley's played. <laughs> this is mental. Bradley's played 1,200 minutes in seven weeks. Honestly, these numbers are insane. This is great. No other club. This, by the way, this Kev. There's no other club in the Premier League that's doing this to players. It's literally, we are literally like putting our fingers in plug sockets and hoping we don't get electrocuted. Like, I honestly don't know how we haven't had more injuries looking at these numbers. Like, I always wondered, why do we get so many injuries? And now I know why. <laughs> like, like, the stats are straight out there. So he's got a really big, um, he's got a really big workload. He's played 200 minutes in the last six days. Bradley. <laughs> Gomez. Gomez. Jesus Christ. Gomez is worse. Gomez played both England games and he's done 150% career average now for Liverpool. And he's got an injury record. So he is like putting fingers in plug sockets now. And we've now lost Robbo, and we're not going to play Shimakas because I'll tell you Shimakas's um, numbers. He's been he's been monstered in the last um, couple of games. Um, so um, so Robbo's out. Shimakas won't Robbo play. Robbo got an injury for Scotland. Yeah. Does he yeah, get injured? Yeah. yeah, he's out yeah. for four weeks. He'll be out for about four weeks with a lower ankle injury. So we lost him for months playing for bloody Scotland. He just gets back and then we send him again and he's injured again playing for Scotland. I think yes. it's how we told him. Choose between us or bloody Scotland. I think I, I, I think next year will be different under under Edwards and and um, and um, sorry, yeah. um, Edwards Hughes and. And the new manager, like I think it will be different with with internationals. Need need to put our foot down. Yeah, Canate, Canate, one hundred and fifty, one hundred and fifty three percent career average. Did you know that Canate gets gets an injury four times a a season on average? He's he's on three for us this season, and he's only missed six games, which is incredible. It's absolutely incredible that we haven't. He hasn't he hasn't suffered more. Um he wasn't in training today, by the way. I just want to let you know. Elliot well, don't tell your thinkers because he played the other night though, uh Kamer. He shouldn't have even he shouldn't have even gone to France. I have no idea why we let him exactly, go. Exactly. Uh, that's just nuts. Elliot well, can I say he goes to France, yeah. Yeah, he played. Yeah, he played. He played. <laughs> Elliot who's got injured it, 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 two two weeks in a row for Scotland. I don't, well, I don't, I don't, I think no, I was just saying that uh, Canate playing for France that means he's ready for Sunday. So bonus. Exactly. So I but think he wasn't in training. Yeah. He wasn't in training today when when a lot of people were. I'm just saying. Um, Probably doing Elliot. checkups. Probably doing some checkups Elliot. on him, isn't he? Elliot, you've got to hear Elliot's. Elliot's incredible. So if you thought if you thought Bradley's was bad, was mad, Elliot's played. 900 minutes in four weeks. 900 minutes in four weeks, Elliot's played. Elliot's played 10 games straight. And he played both the under-21s for 90 minutes as well. Yeah, he did, yeah. Elliot, I mean, I mean, if we are trying to break Elliot, then we're, we're really, we really trying to do a good... We really want to do a number on Elliot, don't we? Like we are literally... We're walking a tightrope with Elliot now because there's only a certain amount of time someone that young can put that much stress on their body consistently. And to play a guy for 900 minutes in four weeks is just, for, for me, I think is irresponsible, if I'm honest. And he's also done 220 minutes, by the way. 220 minutes. Okay. Um, Diaz, Diaz played 191 minutes for uh, for his international team. He's played 2,200 minutes in 10 weeks. 2,200 minutes in 10 weeks Diaz has played. That's basically what players play in a season. Season, yeah. It's, it's insane. It is insane the amount of workload these guys have done. But who's is it? Okay, man. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I, 
is it is it the fact that is it is it the fact that we we're just go we're going so strong in all competitions? Is it the fact that we need to rotate more? I, I don't know. Like I think we need a bigger squad. If I'm honest, like that's what I was going to say. Squad. Instead of having the kids like take up that, uh, that you know, we we've only used the kids when we really really had to use them. Otherwise, we'd still play these players. If they were, if they, if they weren't injured, we'd still play them. When they probably shouldn't be getting played, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. We need a bigger squad. We, we need a bigger squad, or we need to not not loan as many players out. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you fix it. Like Costas has played two hundred and twenty-four minutes in six days. He's way over his limit. He done one hundred and twenty minutes in. Um, in his last game as well for the qualifiers, which they lost on penalties. Um, Gapco's done 200 minutes in his international. He's done 2,000 minutes in 10 weeks. Gapco, he's been completely blown out. Like, And you wonder why Gapco started, he's he's started to stink. Yeah. So you wonder why Diaz is starting yeah. to stink. Yeah. Yeah. Diaz is starting to stink. Gapco's starting to stink. We know... like. We need to look at how many minutes these people have done to understand why they're starting to stink because fatigue's kicking in. Like mm. you've got a click, you, you've got a chance to score the winner against Man United, but you played so much football, you haven't got that one touch that you need because you're not you're not as fit as you are. Like you're not as you're not you you've got that fatigue in you still. But the thing about it is, and and I'll I'll touch on it as well. Jones and Stefan Pazetis are back on the seventh. Um, I thought I thought I'd let you know. Um, 30th, Trent and Jota are penciled in to come back. This is a this is April. Um, oh, Robbo's what? four Thursday? weeks. What's his yeah. season's over? This is this is like this is like a really top top medical guy um, on Twitter that that said this. Um, what I will say though, and this is really interesting, we've got a game every three days to the end of the season if you put it in perspective okay man city have got a game every 2.6 days and arsenal have got one every 2.8 days so we've got a little bit of wiggle room but that's probably because we're at the cup mm. and probably because we played a lot more um we've got eight games in 24 days and 15 games in total left to the end of the season if we win everything and we go all the way now for Brighton and I'm just looking at workloads Salah's low so he's got a low workload because he didn't go to some international um, primed players which means they're ready means means they've they've had enough rest and they've got enough space in between the internationals you know and the next game Bradley, Dom, Gomez, Quonset, Endo and Nunes are good. Red-lined players are Canate, Mac, Diaz, Gapko, Elliot, Costas and Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk played both internationals, by the way. Both pointless internationals. Like, he's going to the Euros. Like, like these players are going to the Euros as captains. Why are they playing pointless internationals? I have no idea. The only positive is um, Gareth Southgate um, played, played what's the name? Played Man City star player, didn't he? Um, for all the games consistently. And Rice, um, or oh, what's his name? Man City kid, um, looks like a chav. Bowden, Bowden yeah. <laughs> Maxed him out, like played him constantly, Good. and also Rice constantly. That's the only positive. <laughs> like that's mad, though. That's, that's, that, that, that's Can you Those answer for us? Please, before you before you go on, carry on because it's fascinating. I'm finished. I'm finished. Oh, I bet. Can you yeah. can you uh, answer Philip Birdwell because he's just joined us. <laughs> um, I wouldn't I wouldn't believe Paul Joyce, Phil. Um, I don't think Paul Joyce is in the in the loop anymore. He hasn't been for a number of years. Um, he didn't have a clue about Paul Joyce. Didn't have a clue about like Nunes or anyone like that. I'm trying to think of Paul Joyce's last big story. Um, 
I think it must have been like Suarez or someone like that. He's been well out of the loop for a long time. Joyce. You know when you were going your own up? thing. <laughs> Do you know when you were talking about that thing before? Yeah. Uh, K Mac, you watch too much egg for egg. <laughs> Look at this. Hang on, where are we? I oh, can't get us. Hang on. This is a crack of this. Okay. Drunk Vigo. K Mac has gone nuts. I love it. <laughs> It, it 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 worries me though, drunk, because because he's going. So it's like it's like that. <laughs> it's like I don't want him to leave a mess behind. And I, and I know and I know we're all saying he's leaving an incredible squad behind, but I don't want him to leave an incredible broken squad <laughs> behind. <laughs> you know, I don't want our players to be yeah. to be absolutely mullered. Like you know, the preseason and. After squads, after squads walking wounded, like I want, yeah, uh, you know, and I also don't want all our players to get to get battered and then, and then we fall off at the end of the season yeah. because we need something to change next season. We need the know, new regime to bring in a few new ideas around uh, not redlining players because we've done it too much in recent years. Redlining players, and there's also what you've just said with your research there, Kev about. The internationals, like the way our players have to play, shit internationals against shit teams where they shouldn't be playing. Like, I don't know, Holland playing bloody Gibraltar and Virgil played. It's like, what? Why, why does Virgil have to play Holland? that? <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. Like, like, we just need to, like, we just need to have, like, rules in place where it's, like, yeah, you can take our guys, but they only play 45 minutes like, mm. in each yeah, game. If you're playing Gibraltar, just play him for 45, or don't play him at all. Play a kid against Gibraltar because you'll beat them 20 nil anyway. Why are you playing Virgil van Dijk against bloody Gibraltar? It's a nonsense. Well, there you go, you see. That's what the... Yeah. Hey, Mikhail. Said in the Athletic that Robo Scan came back positive and he's only sustained an impact injury, so should be out for days rather than weeks, thankfully. Oh, that's brilliant news then. Oh, good. And, he's uh, very don't we? And uh, Norman says, I'm asleep here. This fella thinks he's Michael Edwards on drugs. Nice. <laughs> No use. No, I'm talking about you there, to be honest. They probably hey, was talking about me. <laughs> no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. And Redbird says, bit of dis oh, yeah, because Norman there, Norman, bit disrespectful saying that some of us find what K-Max saying interesting respect to it. But, uh, yeah, I, I do, to be honest. I really do. I'm made up with it. I'm made up of what he says, actually. We I also, like all the stats. You're the man for the stats, you see. You know, and we good research on stats. the internationals, Kev. I enjoyed that myself. That was uh, enlightening. I didn't know that about all the minutes they played international-wise. I mean, I suspected it, like, I suspected it much. But um, that's quite um, revealing and uh, not in a good way. Not it's, the good fact way. That, it's the fact that we... We knew how we knew how much they played before the internationals, and then we all sit there and go, "Oh, I can't wait for those internationals to, to come." Mm. That's gonna that they couldn't Didn't come at a better me. time. No, yeah. no, they made things worse because they they all got they all got absolutely battered in the internationals against, against nothing teams, mm. and now they've got to go on a bloody eight games in eight games in twenty four days, like, and and one one of them's. Three games in six days away. <laughs> Seriously, I'd like the new regime to be um, a little bit more. Um, what's the word? Um, well, I'd just like us to lie more, and it's not cheating, just the way Alex Ferguson never used to let Ryan Giggs go and play for Wales when Giggs was in his 20s. He hardly ever played ever for Wales in his 20s. 
this is what I want to see going forward from our new regime. They say, no, you're not going. And if the player says, yeah, I am, then they'll say, well, we pay your wages, so uh, you can't argue, or we'll just fuck you off, like, and you won't play for us anymore. You can find a new club, mate. Do you know what I mean? Just get really arsy with them and say, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. You're staying here. We pay your wages. We don't care about your national team. This shit anyway. So behave. Yeah, that's the power. In them days, you can get away with it. The nowadays, social media, photographers everywhere, this, that, and the other. You can't get away with nothing, you know. So I'll have my threats against the player's family. Then I'd say we're going to kill you. <laughs> children, if you go on the international. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. No, look. The bigger picture being this: we're going for four trophies this season. We've had injuries non-stop because of maybe VAR stoppages that we've had in games. That's added to the injury list. Uh, we've also haven't really bought enough players in the summer. We bought Sabotzlai, McAllister, and Endo for the midfield after releasing about four of them. So that also adds to the agenda. So there's a big, big reason why these guys have been sort of outplayed. You know, I'm just happy that we've actually sort of got through the two months now that we had <laughs> everyone missing Alisson, Yota. Yo Jones, you know, so we had to play the young lads. We got through it. We're still sort of top of the league, you know. Don't worry about it. Sunday is the main thing now. Who's fit? Who's ready to play? I agree. Well, I agree. Well, you know, uh, roll me one Kenobi. <laughs> Should, uh, you know, why? why you know, we call them. Don't uh, Diego called. Uh, FSG cheap skates and he said uh, Kenobi said why how and he just said didn't invest after winning the Champions League and he didn't that's true he didn't which was a, a disgrace in my well brought in Adrian didn't we and Seth Vandenberg was it yeah yeah and Piago, sure. I think. Yeah. yeah I think that was the first sort of alarm bell with them guys you know Klopp just win the Champions League. In the old days, Paisley, Shankly, they'd win a league and get two top, top players with next in the transfer window. And I think uh, we haven't really done that. We haven't really had big, big, big windows, you know. They uh, they gave him the money for Canate, but, but Klopp couldn't sign him. Um, uh, Leipzig wouldn't release him. Um, they wouldn't let him leave. So... Um, so Klopp had the money to spend, um, which was the which was the money for Canate, mm. but um, he didn't want to spend it. He wanted to wait another year for Canate. That's that's one major thing. Um, is this is this the this is was this when we won the league or was this when we won the Champions League? Champions League wasn't Champions it? Adrian and Seb Vandenberg. Okay. Yeah. Some was that when we had Naby Keita, or was that when we waited yeah, for Naby Keita? Yeah, we had, we him. had him. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it was, it was Canate, yeah. As much yeah. as I love Canate and rate him, I'm a little bit sorry that we bought him now. We should have bought someone else who's not as bloody injury prone. They might not be as good, but they'd be on the pitch more often. Well, the thing is, we say, I, you know, this is the only thing I gave... I, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I gave credit for, and that's uh, Edwards. I gave credit to Edwards for this, uh, and it was after he left, and he wanted to get rid of the midfield that we got rid of last year. And Jürgen said, "No, they've still got another good season in them." Mm. And this is why, you know, I, I think he wanted to get rid of Thiago as well. I'm not quite too sure on that, but he wanted to get rid of uh, Oxlade, Chamberlain, you know, Henderson, Milner. He wanted to get rid of those mm. titles, obviously. And even Matip, he wanted to get rid. He said, let's bring in new uh, a new midfield with legs. That's what he said. And Klopp said no, and he was made it. He was murder. He was really bad blood between them. And I'm just saying that politely, by the way. Mm. And uh, that was the end of him. And then he went. 
he says, I'll have had enough of you. I'm going at the end of the season. Remember when, uh, and the other fella left, what was his name? He took over him. He left, he only had six months here. It was he his dream had... job. It was his dream job. Yeah. Oh, what was his name? I forget his name. But anyway, yeah. he went. The German fella that we've just had. Oh, that's that. No, when, when uh, the other fella left, um, he's the he's the guy. He's the guy who signed who signed McAllister and Sabolsai, um this season. What was his no, name? No, Schmacker. Was... Schmacker signed them. No, no, okay. he 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 got all the deals done before. Yeah, yeah, Schmacker, yeah. Schmacker turn up and yeah. Oh, I know what you mean, but I forgot Shut his the door. name. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. Ward. Anyway, Ward. Yeah, Julian yeah, Ward. Yeah. Julian Ward. Julian Ward. So why did he leave? Um, because because he wasn't getting listened to. Exactly. I, I'll I'll tell you what as well. Um, not a lot of people know this. Um, but there's also two other players that Liverpool had lined up under Edwards before Edwards left, and I'll name them, and you'll be so pissed off that we didn't get them. <laughs> Akata. Yeah. Alfonso Davies, that was done. Mm. That was all done with Canadian red caps. That was all done. Seriously. Um, didn't want him. Pop didn't want him. And um uh what's his name? Um Bruno Gamerish. Well that was a shame, yeah. Seriously, guys. Why did we get Gavardio? Why did we get him? That's what I want to know. Gavardio. That wasn't Edwards wasn't around when Guardiola was. No, was no, I, I know, I understand that, but Liverpool, I, I wanted I've, them to go. We go. we should have got we should we had the chance to get Guardiola before he went to Leipzig. We had the chance to get Guardiola before he went to Leipzig. We knew about him. That's what I mean. Like, we had That's what I mean, and we didn't get him. That was all. That was all well known. I I still can't believe we didn't get Haaland. Like. <laughs> He literally, he like literally Edwards, Edwards was saying, no, you want to be signing Haaland. <laughs> you don't want to be signing Minamino. You want to be signing the other guy. And he, and he didn't get him. He went for Minamino. Like, I mean, Minamino, Minamino. Minamino was brilliant, but, but we could have had bloody Haaland. <laughs> Jesus. Minamino. Uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, he's a nice lad, but I think Klopp, Jürgen went on two games he played he, against us for Salzburg. Do you know, do you know who Minamino reminds you know who Minamino reminds me of? And and I know you're gonna agree with me. Gapco. He reminds yeah. me of Gapco. Yeah. You know, he's 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 at a level, but he's not at that level. And he'll do well in the cups and he'll get you a goal here and there. But he's not he's not a starter, he's not a star, if that makes sense, like. Yeah, of I mean, course it does. And if, gonna, and if you're gonna pay you're gonna pay thirty six million for a Minamino <laughs> who cost you what? Eight? <laughs> little mini you know me. Little mini me. <laughs> little mini whoa, me. Someone, whoa, oh. someone's just wrote I'd say Gapco's a downgrade to Minamino. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, look, look that up if you don't believe me. We could have had Alfonso Davies before he went to um, Bayern Munich. Seriously, we could have had him. Well, I, I, you know, you, 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 we, we can talk about them all the time. Uh, but that's the sad thing. Minamino's gone. And I don't think he was good enough when we signed. He wasn't at that level, that level no. that took him there. He wasn't a Jota-type player. If you know what I mean, and he did score in these little mad games. Like, like Gapko, he scores tappings. You know, you're not you're not signing Minamino to win the league because that's no. what we were going for. And exactly. and this this Japanese player for like on the cheap from yeah. from Salzburg turns up. Who no one's heard of. Let's be honest. Exactly. No one's heard of him. He only no. cost him like, seven million or six yeah, million, was, didn't he, he Minamino? Like a, he had like a little a little cheapo release clause in his contract mm. and i'm like like seriously is is that what we're doing doesn't that remind you a bit of an endo mm. yeah. yeah from what i remember minamino yeah. was only about six million pounds in yeah, sterling 
But you don't go on a couple of games. You do not go on a couple of games to sign players, if you know like what I, I mean. Like, I thought the whole point in Edwards going was we were going to change the model and we were we weren't going to like sell to buy we were going to go and get the finished articles like i thought that was that was the whole point like in in the move of him leaving but we didn't who did we get that was a finished article like seriously like nunez wasn't a finished article when we got him he was a work in progress diaz was a work in progress still is he's 27 finished. Yeah, finished articles cost big money. Uh, came but, we, but we spent big money, right. mate. We spent 84 million on Nunes and 30, 38 million on Diaz. And that's yeah, but a lot 30, of money, mate. The 30 I, I, odd million signings for me is the average. And a club like Liverpool should be playing double that for players, if you understand my point. I think um, a lot of players come with potential. I think that's the way FSG work. They like potential because it's cheaper. Um, and also it gives the manager a chance to develop the guy the way he wants him to play for him, you know. So it's all like a lot of business related into football nowadays. I think it sort of drives people a bit around the twist, you know, um, with numbers, how much money we make in this, that and the other. For me, us fans just want to see the transfer budget in the summer. You know, every season, every summer, 100 million for the manager to spend on making the team better. You know, the owners can make how much money they want. As long as the team is healthy, you know, and the manager's happy doing that job. But people like Diaz, yeah, he costs 37 million. Salah, 35 million. Mane, 38 million. These are bargains, you know. And there weren't the finished articles when we got them, but Klopp, with his management skills, turned these guys into world-class players. And only he could have done that, I think. Just a, 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 yeah. a, a thing on the uh, an heads up on young Austin, you know, uh, Daryl's lad, he's all right, right you know, the medics came out, sorted him. Oh, uh, he's asleep now. I got a message off him before, uh, so that's all right, guys. It's been, great. Know, it's been great, guys. I'm, I'm glad you jumped on for a bit and had a chat with you. Um, so if I bored you with, with, with the stats, apologies. Um, no, 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 don't say that came out, they were brilliant then, because we uh, know why, if you could imagine what happened last season, and the lads were all leggy, but I'd seen that the season before, and that's why I said, at the close season, two years ago, we need two uh, midfielders, I'd seen it myself, Yeah. but if you'd have come out then, and said on here, if I would have had this, and said how many games, you know, they've all played, especially the midfield, because that's all he was playing, the midfield, and they were leggy. Everyone was <laughs> leggy. It's a knock-on effect. <laughs> leggy, um, I love that. I just, so I, just no, hope it I, love them, so. I just hope it doesn't continue on to the next season, where we have another knock-on effect, because everyone's been overplayed. Anyway, I, I've got yeah, well, guys just, right, just but, before um... you go, just before you go, Gwilym uh, Balag says after the next four games he will make his decision. So you're right there. He, 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 he taking no notice of all the bollocks that's coming out about Jabby, uh, you know, not coming here. Please don't take any notice of that. Never mind the bollocks. Mm. By the by the way, Gwilym Balag is really close to the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He He's is. a Spanish scouser. <laughs> Uh, no, no, he, he looked rapid, didn't he? I remember yeah. him being there. He asked yeah, me to quite... take him around. I should have took him around one day, but uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it. He yeah, knows Abby. Know. He knows Abby Alon so well as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Big, uh, there you go, guys. I've got to shoot one. All right. Take care. Listen, when you go, with JK Mac, we're doing a uh, post uh, uh, thing. An hour after the Manchester City game, do you fancy going? Man City? Yeah. When we after, play Brighton you know, on, on, on Sunday. Oh, Brighton. We're doing a post-match okay. post thing an hour yeah, after I'll, the game. Yeah, send us the link. I'll, I'll try and jump on because I'm, do, I'm doing one with uh, with Jamie as well. So I'll kind of I'll, I'll, I'll see, see how the timings work out. All right. 
Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Kay Mac. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I think we'll win as well. I think we'll win three something. Probably three one. Three one's yeah. always the, the the score. I say now. That'll do, mate. <laughs> It'll do, do me as well. Bye. See you later, guys. Bye. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay, Mark. Thank you. Bye. And as uh, TW says, Joyce's bollocks comes from Edwards's team. Soap yeah. operas everywhere, bro. Soap operas yeah. everywhere. Even yeah, in the chat, it's, 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 come on, guys. It's, it's, you know, we're football it's, 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 fans. Like we've got opinions. Have a bit of banter and uh, just get on with it, man. Yeah, it was a good uh, conversation there with Jamie, though, wasn't it? Ding. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, it was a good convo. Really good convo. But you know. It's just all opinions and everything else. All opinions. And they don't invest in us. As I said, they don't invest. Yeah, they are, for me, the way they've handled this season alone has sort of wound me up in the way they've just handled the business. You know, at the end of the day, it was like, we want Edwards in. It's like, come on, guys. Klopp just said yesterday he wants to leave at the end of the season. Morning after, Edwards is walking in with a big smile on his face. Yeah. You know, that is so like a slap in the face to Klopp, you know. So we, maybe Klopp knew this was going to happen, you know, because at the end of the day, Edwards is good at what he does, you know. Let's not let's let get it twisted here. He knows what he's doing. He's good for a football club who want to save money on transfers and get players who are better than what they bought them for. And that's what I mean by potential Potential players they buy, so they can develop into world class players, you know, and they're cheaper like that. Perfect model for FSG. Well, one of the comments there, I'm sorry, boys, whoever it was, you know, I apologize. He came out with, I don't know whether it was Redbeards or Anfield Raw or something, or even what's his name? Herbert Lom's brother, I'm not quite so sure. And he came out with a cracker and he said, oh, I forget who it was, I'm sorry. And he said, It's all right, he has was uh, getting these players. He said, But he doesn't train them. He's not the manager. And it's Jürgen Klopp who moulds the team. Mm -hmm. That's why we were, we were successful, not Edwards. That was a great That's, comment. You know, going on with that comment there, Frank. I, was, I, was, I think I asked you guys a few weeks ago about if Klopp was a manager of Chelsea at the start of this season, where would they be in the Premier League now? Yeah. It's all about the coach. It's all about yeah. the coach. If that coach yeah. isn't like Klopp, for example, we love Klopp. He's a perfect Liverpool moulded manager, you know. Uh, some guys don't like Klopp, their opinion, but it's all about the manager. You can get the players in, no problem. Look at David Moyes. He got Rice went, he got Paqueta in, he got um he's got Bowen in there already. Then he's got the the guy from Kudos from Ajax. So he's yeah. brought the players in for Moisey to actually do a job. They yeah. haven't been really firing, firing, you know? No. So it's all about the coach. No, well I like that Tim Steigman. I like him. Yeah, I like him as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, where whether he just I don't know. I, I just don't know anymore. It, it, it really pisses me off, to be honest, lads. It really does. Mm -hmm. And that's the sad incitement. But I've got one good thing. Go and shop in somewhere with our fancy. And she said, I'll come down somewhere and I'll take your shop. And I said, there's no shops open. It's good Friday. She said, no, behave yourself. So, <laughs> window shopping is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the Easter eggs in. I always yeah. get Easter I used to love Easter when I was a kid, but I always forget, yeah, but I it. I forget it's happening because I ain't got no children. No, and you I, don't I, get I, any Easter eggs. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you that's like Oh, God, I haven't had Easter eggs for years because uh, uh, Easter stopped when I was about 15, sadly. Like, my mum had to why? change the religion. Jesus came back? <laughs> no, my mum became a Jehovah's Witness, like, so they have different mm -hmm. things. They don't have Christmases or birthdays or nothing. So I got screwed for my 16th birthday party, and Christmas was a no go as well, like, once I was 15. 
Easter was another one. So I don't notice any of that shit happening around me. Yeah, but you've got to look at religious festivals. They're sort of capitalist. They've become mm. businesses. They make a lot yeah. of money at Christmas. They make yeah. a lot of money. Yep. Well, I love it. The world... kid, anyway, I still had it when I was a kid, but as an adult, I've never had it, like, sadly. Mm -hmm. Never had what? Christmas and Easter egg. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Any <laughs> celebrations. What is it about you there? <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I, um, I, I went so long to the, you know, one, one, one boxing day. I went so long to our social club. You know, it was about 2021. And I went so long there. And I'll tell you what was out at the time, Delilah. Right, something like that. And uh, went so long. And the priest was there, and but I didn't know that he was there with me, Auntie Leah. He was so religious, you know. Mass, mate, you know, slapped him, get to mass, you know, or whatever. Anyway, so we're in there, and he was a fella. And he, he was just on, like, you know, a guitar and another fella uh, on a drum, you know, a little drum. Shit, 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 shit. You know, that was the the, uh, the band. <laughs> well, that was right. Well, anyway, I got up. I had a voice there. Got up. And uh, I said to the lads, do you know Delilah? And he went, eh, no, but we just go along. Mm -hmm. You know, so I started singing Delilah. And uh, do you know where he says, I stood there laughing. You know that one? Mm -hmm. I stuck my in their mouth and she laughed no more. <laughs> my auntie Leah came from behind I didn't even know she was there and my auntie Leah came from behind this post with the priest mm. <laughs> lashed out Never to yeah, go I to used to like spoofing it in church when I was a kid <laughs> but when I was about 8 or 9 we'd go and sit at the back of the, ch the Catholic church like, and just sit there laughing we weren't invited in we weren't meant to be there but we'd go into the masses and just sit there laughing when we were about eight or nine, just to see if we could get a withering glance from some old bag who had a cob on that we found church funny. It's just mad, isn't it? They had it. TW Day. Talk of buying, not buying Ireland is absolute crap. Real City Man U buying all wanted them, and he went to Dortmund for 17 million. But we want it. We, we could have got him. We could have got him. Sorry. We could have got him. That's the point. We could have had him. And he went there for uh, 17 mil. Anyway, I'm going to end it now, lads. Okay, mate. Just got, you know, just got to thank uh, Jamie. I've got to thank our Daryl, you know, poor Daryl. Uh, I, I hope his lad's okay. Uh, just got to thank uh, JK, uh, Lee, and k -Mac. But most importantly, I've got to thank all the lads and girls on this. this. I know. What, what's the... Uh, Frank, when you finish off this stream, can you redirect to Bajan Reds TV? What's that? That's some uh, Caribbean guys. They do a football... They're Liverpool fans as well. Oh, are they? Yeah, That's I've seen that channel. Yeah, I've seen that once. Yeah. I've got to do something. You know, like, uh, what's your film? <laughs> it's all you get back to reality. In the old days, Frank, uh, in the old days, did you notice how football fans, like Liverpool fans, never used to argue with each other? No. It was just like, it was like code of conduct. You don't talk shit to each other. It's like respect, family, keep it cool like this. Modern day fans, man, some of them have got. <laughs> it's like it gets a bit crazy sometimes, you know? We all yeah, support the same yeah. team. It yeah, gets, you're right you know? there, Jim. <laughs> right yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, the, 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 the likes of. I uh, don't oh, great, great show, Frank. And friends, best on YouTube. Isn't that lovely? Sam, bro. Isn't that lovely? Thanks, Steve. Double, yeah. And keep it real, so it's 25 minutes they go live. That must be that, uh, that, that channel. Bad, bad jam, is it? Bad on red, yeah. 
it, it, it sounds like uh, yardy stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is yeah, so. Oh, it is. There you go. It is getting way bad, yeah, <laughs> Anyway, a uh, lovely to you. Thank you, Frank Carlisle panel. The chat, you guys are the best. Thanks, Sam. You. You'll never walk alone. Thank you so much. And uh, Ari and Mikhail, have a good weekend, all. That's lovely. Bless Thank you. you. Really. Good night. luck. Uh, thank you guys, great stream, nice to all says JSY. What is JSY? I'm sorry, have I been on that? Has he been on it yet? No? No, no, they've got their own football channel. I think it's women's football or something, Leeds. Women's? Yeah, Leeds women's really? football, talk is shows, it, I think. Is JSY a woman then? I'm not sure, I called her bro. She never said I'm not a bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, you know, people have been swear. I don't swear, as you know, do I, Lee? Not much, no. <laughs> say not much, why didn't you just say no? <laughs> well, I've got to be truthful, uh, haven't I? Uh, I'm too know, honest bro. you. do Lido swear know. sometimes, but not often. Yeah. <clears throat> just when you get Oh, away. yeah, keep it there. I was telling you about them three Leeds ladies. Uh, and they have they have their own show. Yeah, I put the link in the chat. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. I'll have to get onto them. Yeah, women who watch watch along. <laughs> it's twenty twenty four, bro. And I don't swear. Lee, Lee does. He, he swears all the time, and, and sometimes I have to take him off because he swears too much. Uh, he's over there. See you Sunday, thanks CW. At least uh, we've got one that comes on. Keep it real, comes on. And for the raw keeps on. Red Bear comes on. You know, so you know we're guaranteed there. And look, do you know I had eighty odd uh, things up there. You know the eye, the little eye. How many's looking in on my thing here? Two likes I had all night, and I was saying press the like, press the like. Two bloody likes after all then. <laughs> Red bears. <laughs> Frank, you said <should> bollocks <laughs> later. Uh, yes, it is. Um, uh, it was because, uh, like, I read out these things. Just, you know, trying to... When I read out, someone said F off, and I, 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 said, I came out because I said it, because I'm reading it. I'm reading it. I'm trying to multitask. And it's shocking. And uh, Jane says, uh, Badgy on TV are great guys. Part of the family loved them. Yeah, that's Jane. Thanks, Jane. And the Red Birds uh, says, he's, oh, yeah, I said that. And uh, we're just trying to offer something different, say J J J S Y. And their link is on there, is it? JSY? Yeah, yeah. Can you send it to me? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm useless. Ah, oh, look at that, roll me one Kenobi, the best name in the world. I don't care about anyone. And remember uh, when Daryl come on, wrote, oh, that was so funny that he must have been trying to type out this thing that came out so wrong. That was mm. fantastic. And uh, Red Bears, T90 has sworn a lot lately. I don't remember that in this new class. <laughs> no, uh, see, uh, football is different. When I took uh, my granddaughter to the game, you know, against Southampton, it's the only, it's the only game I've ever been to in my entire life. And don't forget, I've been going since uh, the Shankly days. It's the only game I've never swore. And again, because my little granddaughter was sitting next to me, because she said to me, why are you shouting, granddad? I said, that's what you do. She said, because we were in the main stands and no one was shouting. I was the only one who was shouting. Mad, isn't it? Oh, Mark, Mark, give, give Gibraltar back to Spain. I love that, Mark. <laughs> 
Go live from sunny Gibraltar. That's a catchphrase, that. Like That's a catchphrase. <laughs> Cheers, you know, well, you know I, I'm always talk I, in lectures. You know when I used, used to give the lectures, I always talk about the Spanish and the the Brits. You know, fighting fighting each other. Well, the English then the Brits. You know, fighting each other. But it and was a strategic talk. thing, wasn't it, years ago, Gibraltar, because of where it was situated, the gateway to the Mediterranean. But yeah. it's not important anymore in that regard. No, just it's, no, it's not. Arms. No, and Gibraltar's a landlord. It's Spain. That's it's nearly Spain. Africa, isn't it? It's very close to Africa. Yeah, I just I just love Italy to come to Liverpool and annex it. Mm -hmm. And we'll all become Italian and we can all go to Sorrento and places like that, the Amalfi Coast, and go to see the Forum in Rome. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah, the Falkland Islands was important before the Panama Canal existed when you had to sail round Cape Horn to get to America's um, east coast, uh, west coast. But, um, no longer, no longer. True. Uh, roll me one, Kenobi. Frank R. Jim from the royal family. True gentleman. Thank you. I was in a panto uh, playing. Uh, I was playing Ricky Tomlinson, you know. In the panto playing Vicky Tomlinson as a king, oh, if you know what I mean. I was playing him as a king, <laughs> and uh, the girl was I forget, what was it called? I forget what it was called. The panto up in Ormsky. All right, there, Barbara. <laughs> You're doing that again, there, Barbara. <laughs> and a little girl, uh, not a little girl, I mean, you know, she was only little, the lazy, you know, was playing Barbara. And uh, I'm feeling raw. JSY talks football. I've, I've, I've subbed. Oh, I'm not lovely. I'm feeling raw subbing to that, them, that, those girls. Thank you, says. Uh, and uh, raw, he keeps forgetting to take his pills, but he's got to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's, that's mad. Oh, that's lovely, lovely. So listen, uh, thank you so much, uh, JK and you, Lee, you know, for staying up. Good news is that uh, little Austin Darrell's lad is uh, okay. He's sleeping. And um, it, it, it's just great to uh, think, because th th this is, th this, th this channel, this stream, honestly, is we're all we're all in one we're all in one except when k mac comes around and come out with us symbiosis yeah. love it i really love it uh, but anyway, Frank, yeah. uh, just a moment about larry lloyd the the player who passed away larry, yeah yeah Sh take yeah. a moment yeah yeah what could you, you know, tell him about, about him, about him? He was good, you know. Big mm -hmm. Larry, and we were all, uh, you know, I was young and, you know, full of energy and everything, black hair. I wouldn't recognise myself if I looked at a photograph of myself today. I put a photograph up, on right, you know, and uh, I had black hair and a moustache, you know, black moustache. So, uh, and it was like a photo mug. Do you know, remember, remember when you were getting um, DVD, not DVDs, videos, but you had to have your photograph taken. So I, I like that, you know, to have a photograph taken and showed. So I put us up, I think, on their Facebook. And uh, someone said, uh, you look like an 80s Italian porn star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's <laughs> Frankie Frank. I always wonder what you got up to in the 80s, Frank. Now I know. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I wish they had the energy now. <laughs> oh, I oh, Good night, all. Much love to the best channel ever. Isn't that lovely? Thank you. Sweet dreams, y'all. Says uh, Red Bear. Sweet dreams, y'all. Night, Red Bear. Peace, bro. CW, Jamie on 12.15. And uh, roll me one Kenobi. Alpha, respect you, bro. This is lovely because they're all uh, good. They're all everything. You know, the same to... Uh, the unfair law to uh, Jean. 
and uh, you know she's even back to uh, rest well on. Is that, oh, that, oh, that's the Anfield Road. I thought it might have been to me with my hands and, you know, this well. But listen, J.K. Lee, love you, honestly, guys. I, I, I really mean that. Cheers, and uh, hopefully, I'll, 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 you know, let, let's hope it will be a good post-match yeah. chat. Yeah, don't forget, um, I've got me, me different emails. So when you send us me email for, um, for Sunday... It's a different one now, isn't it? The old armchair palaver on G. No, uh, no. Well, Jason's got us, Annie. I've got it as well, and he's got it. It's the. I'm going to ask you, JK. Isn't that the worst email ever in the world? <laughs> I'm going to start laughing when I seen it. <laughs> I I just the one million. Lee, mm -hmm. you know what? I, well, I never thought I'd be using it much. I only made it to create a, an extra, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, account on uh, my old computer. So I had my own one account. And I never thought I'd use it much, but my old email died with my old computer. So, But by the time you re re uh, write that email out, you can go and visit him and tell him yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should have just... <laughs> I should have just made it 100 instead of 1 million. That was the Do problem. It, yeah, it's going to take too long to write that email address. <laughs> copy and paste. <laughs> Thank God for That's copy what and paste. I said, I said, why, why, why that? I said, this is in digits. And you went, yeah. I, you know, I said, this is in uh, 1 million. Uh, yeah, that uh, would have been all right. Uh, 1 million. Seven digits. Seven digits. One and then brackets three. as well. No, that that was to separate it from the rest of the text. The brackets aren't part of it. It's just the word. Well, I didn't know that. I, I, I just said yeah, it's it used to I can't. I can't be bothered at all. Um, I quickly want to tell uh, Roll Me One Kenobi that um, when uh, Drunk was on about FSG or Titan stuff, what it is, a club with our stature should be paying more for players and getting more better quality players in. Like more expensive signings, you know, fans go crazy over expensive signings. And looking at our transfer window after we win the Champions League is probably one reason why the majority of Liverpool fans are not really FSG likers, you know. That's probably what he was on about. Yeah, yeah, true. Thanks, feel, bro. <laughs> true. But isn't it great, and it's just for me to everybody on the uh, the chat there. Thank you so much. Hope to see, hope to see you all on. Sunday, but uh, you know, some good news at least, you know, after the game post match. Mm -hmm. and What's your prediction, we have, um, We'll have two doses of good news, we'll have our results and a good result in the City exactly. Arsenal game. Exactly. Okay, let's get predictions for both games then. Yeah, okay, for the, for the both games. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll go for the draw with um, between Arsenal and uh, Manchester. Uh, Man City. Man City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for the draw there. Two and two also, three. I'll go for a 4 0 win for us. Oh, you stole my prediction out. there, Francesco. I was going to say 4 0 for Liverpool, a good uh, a good win, and I'll say 1 1 between City and Arsenal. I think if they draw, it'll be a 1 0. Okay. Yeah. I'm going 3 0 Liverpool, 2 2 in that game. I think it'll be one one in that game. That's what I, I don't think it'll be a and uh, I'm worried FSG are going to go for the Zerbi. No Zabi's coming, believe me, believe me that uh, honestly at the coming. Three one win, LFC, two two draw, City Arsenal, says uh, Four one TW. And uh, two one city. Gene and Brian yeah. are pretty good at predictions. They sort of sort of get them right. I've noticed that. Well, listen, uh, you know, you know, quickly, uh, where would that leave Arsenal if Arsenal get beat? Where would it leave it? Uh, well, City will be two points ahead of them, and we'll be three points ahead of them. If no, we win well, game as well. yeah, I know that. So it's look, they've got some trickier fixtures. They've got Tottenham, they've got Chelsea, 
Mm. They've got Brighton, so it's going to be exciting times. But yeah, I'd prefer me, that. if one yeah. of the teams had to win, I'd prefer it to be Arsenal that won the game. But I can't see them winning at the S. He has, I just can't see it. So a draw is probably the best we could hope for in that regard. Yeah, because City are going to be harder to beat to the title than Arsenal, I think. Although Arsenal were in the title race last year, they were in it right up to the end. They fell away, didn't they, in the last month? Mm -hmm. And I think they might well do that again. So um, I don't really want to see uh, Man City winning. Man City winning is the last thing I want in that game. If it happens, it happens. But I want a draw or an Arsenal win. A draw would be best for me, I think. My point yeah, of view, yeah. I'd say a draw, so we get a few points on each, on both clubs. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Well, as our lovely Jean says, uh, this is where mentality kicks in. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep it real. I would rather Arsenal win. We know how the yeah, pig mouth roll, roll all for City. I just had a text there, right? A text. Listen to this. This is... This will cheer you up. This will cheer you up. And uh, Neil Jones, you know anyone know Neil Jones? I do. Mm -hmm. Anyone know? He's a journalist, right? Mm -hmm. And he says uh, he's just tweeted the job. Right about the job is between Amarim, Gary O'Neill. And Gareth Southgate. <laughs> and underneath it's got Bloody hell, and Edwards <laughs> can fuck off. That's oh. underneath. And Edwards can fuck off. Remember when I said at the beginning, uh, when Edwards first came in, and I said, not at the beginning of tonight's show, I said, I think I was one of the very first who said it, because I got a message. And it says, uh, Jamie Alonso's not even on Edwards's top three list. Think about that. But anyway, lads, I'm heading over to Badjan Stream now. I'll catch you all over there if you're coming. So just keep it real. <laughs> keep it real. I don't want any more Prem wins. The city or Arsenal. <laughs> that is a way. Jeez, that is a way. Anyway, lads, I've got to go. Thank you so much for uh, sustain you know, the sustenance to be honest, you know, being there, uh, being great as usual. And um, it's been a long one tonight, nearly four hours. I know. I know. And I'm sorry about that, I really am. I'm, I'm to keep you up this late. Yeah, I've enjoyed myself. I am tired now, though. I've been going to bed early lately. I've been getting me sleeping in order. We've been going to bed, you know, at like eight, nine, ten o'clock, especially with the no footy and no pods. I've just been having early nights. Like, I'm an old man now. Like, I've got, well, I'm getting there anyway. I need me beauty sleep, don't I? Or I look hideous. <laughs> Your beauty sleep. Beauty. <laughs> No, you don't have to say beauty sleep anymore, Lee. All you've got to say is, I need me Clooney sleep. Me Clooney sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a film. The Clooney. Yeah, it sounds like the Clooney The Clooney Looney sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I never said that, he said that. No, I'm on about the title. <laughs> oh, that's shocking, man. Tracy Neville doesn't think you are, idiotly. Oh. I never said that either. She will be mine. Get in there, la. Anyway, it's just for me to say thank you. See you all on the, an hour after the City game finishes. And uh, it's... Uh, and she's all in. How old are you, Lee? Old enough, old enough. I'm at that age now where I've stopped saying how old I am. I used to always say how old I am, but I've stopped saying it now, so no one will know. It's it. Well, it's I stopped saying secret. how old I was when I was uh, 39. 
that's all. That's I, I stopped that then. Yeah, it's a anyway, stage. Deal, no, I think it was thirty. <laughs> 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 Anyways, good night, lads. I'm going right now. Thank you, uh, chat. Thank you so much. Love you all. See you all on uh, Sunday. Thank you. Peace, everyone. Thank you. Peace, mate. people.